Oh, oh shit. Thing coming up to mute it here. Yeah. Why is YouTube breaking when we play? Yeah, I don't know. It's not uh it's not showing there up. Go. There we go. Whoa, everyone, welcome to From the Ground Up Podcast. Thank you guys so much for being here. Sorry, I'm gonna have to mute Max while he's typing. Oh yeah, you're good. Sorry. Um, so, <laughs> well, if you didn't notice, today we have Max Hicks of <laughs> Max's Well, you're also well, skipping all of the stuff that we did before. So thank you guys yeah. so much for <laughs> Supporting us through uh, Patreon or the people who have done, what do you call it on YouTube? Super Chat. Super Chat, which was awesome because, like, we weren't going to make the threshold of Google or whatever. Oh, you checked we, AdSense? We made it by, like, $1. It was, and like, that's 101. because of, like, the Super Chat. So thank you guys so much for that. And, and you can tell. Chatters. Yeah, we obviously don't make And if you want to, I mean. The super chat's cool just for you. it benefits whoever's doing it too because they get their comment like at the top and anyone who mm -hmm. watches this later like sees that comment immediately. So if you wanted to just like promote yourself or tell your wife happy birthday. And we yeah. usually <laughs> say and we usually, what? It's like a billboard at the Yankees yeah, game. Yeah, it's like or a something? billboard. <laughs> or uh, what do you call it? Oh, the bottom of our, of our video. You know when they say birthday acknowledgments at basketball games or baseball games or football I don't games? Know. Okay, I didn't know they do that. Okay, um, but thank you guys to everyone who supports us, huh? and thank you to everyone who is listening tonight on our special Thursday episode. Because <laughs> nothing special anymore, though, because we have shit on Whoa. any given day. Nothing special. Well, it's anymore. not special to do it not on Monday because we lately have been doing it a lot of times on a Monday. Yeah, we just had a few things like all over the place, and then we were like, "Yeah, we're gonna do it here," and that's how we happened, and then a couple disasters, but. Uh, but we're we here. made it, man. We just, as long as we get down at least one a week, and we did two, people are probably still catching up, to be honest, because we did two a week for what, like three weeks in a row or something? Right. So it's okay to give us a break. But, but we're still the doing live it. chat folks or the, the live watchers get to hang out. Yes. It's like, you know, the same people who hang out every time, which is awesome. Yes. Um, as usual, we have snakes for sale on our website and Instagram and Facebook and t-shirts for sale on the website. But oh. podcast related, I want to start saying this. If you are a new listener, thank you so much for joining us. But this podcast is not PG or it's barely <laughs> PG-13. You're going to start doing I have the, to do the this disclaimer now. I have again. to disclaimer that it's not PG and it's barely PG-13. But also podcast related. Today, we have... <laughs> Max Hicks, Max is Morph, and Max is Bu. Or Max and so, Bu. if you don't know Max, Max is a YouTuber slash uh, rattlesnake rescuer down in Texas, as well as he has Max's Morphs, where he breeds uh, ball pythons as well as some other pythons. And uh, he's from Texas, so he is an interesting guy because he likes guns and he's a vegan and he and goes he an and, and he goes <laughs> to houses with hundreds of rattlesnakes underneath them. He's really all over the place. So Max, thank you so much for being here. Uh, can you give us a little uh, overview of what you do as far as uh, pretty much explain all, all the things I just said? Cause that's probably really confusing to people. So I'm kind of a guy who keeps my hands in a lot of cookie jars and I think that keeps me out of trouble. Uh, gets me into different trouble, but it keeps me out of trouble for the most part. Um, so I do the rattlesnake relocation. Um, basically, I, um, uh, I I work with a company called Big Country Snake. Uh -huh. We, I mean, we put out constant videos and photos. So if you check out the Facebook page, you'll see all of that. And uh, we go through and like we basically find insights, we identify, we do pattern surveys. Um, I do max morphs where I breed and I sell pet quality snakes. And then I, um, and then, or breeder quality, you know, I'm, I think I'm a little better than just pet quality. And then I do Max's view where I just kind of, it's other people's story or it's my animal story, but it's just kind of my view of things. So uh, I share that with people. And then more recently, I just started Max Productions. And basically, that's going to be video work um, for, to provide for people internally. So, you know, uh, if one of my sponsors comes to me, you know, and they say, hey, can you talk about this? Well, a lot of it sounds a lot better. And you can sound 
more unbiased if it comes internally. And I think it just helps people a little bit better. So I basically I'm making videos for them to use for their purposes. And that's that goes beyond reptiles, but uh, reptiles are involved in it. So yeah, let's talk a little bit about so obviously you're in Texas. And I saw that uh, did you go to the Sweetwater Rattlesnake Roundup this year? Uh, it was in 2018. The one is coming up. And I, uh, I recorded it last year. I went and I talked to them like I didn't know what I was talking about. You know, I just wanted to say, oh, what do they tell the public? And I found a lot of lies and, you know, just misconceptions, things they tell people, a lot of fear mongering. And I went there and I mean, it, it was bad. You know, I, I, the things they try and tell people, you know, venom, education, population control. And I try and tell people, hey, they're literally making the problem worse. They're bringing snakes to residential areas with this gassing. And, I mean, I, I've got all the comments. I'm so tired of people going, oh, well, you must be a liberal. And I'm just like, no, I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a moderate. There, I said it. You know, it's, it's, I, uh, it's not like I want people to lay down on top of their snakes, throw their grandkids on rattlesnakes. It's like. I'm looking to help them and I'm looking to show how um, they, you know, the roundup just is doing awful things environmentally with, um, I'm going to hide myself. I've, I'm, I've, I've got the stream playing so I can see the chat, but all I see is my own movements. It's throwing me off. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I basically, I go through and I just kind of, showed what their stuff was and a lot of it was just lies and then you know i told people to donate to the kentucky reptile zoo or the rattlesnake preservation trust if they actually want to help a place that uh, provides venom for people and makes medicine so yeah and i saw i mean obviously you live in abilene which if people don't know is i mean technically <laughs> west texas and you yeah. know it's uh, a little bit middle of nowhere <laughs> It's yeah, the so I mean, you definitely have, first of all, a lot of rattlesnakes, and second of all, a lot of people who don't like rattlesnakes getting in contact with rattlesnakes. So I mean, like, just watching what seems like the like people in your city just commenting on your stuff and commenting on the video that you put out, and like, how did you keep? Because you kept like such a level head about it. I mean, are you just used to it at this point? Honestly, yeah, it's, you know, it, it's, <laughs> um, I'm not sure that it's a good thing that I'm used to it, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's really to the point where I could copy and paste every response. I always hear these same things, you know, rat hogs make them stop rattling, you know, babies are more dangerous. We need rattlesnake population control because of this and this, you know, it's seriously the same kind of stuff that's regurgitated and so i'm kind of just numb to it all and i think the toughest part about it is going to be the cognitive dissonance because you sit there and you tell somebody hey here are the facts clear cut and they just they don't want to hear it it's like it's you know i don't i don't know it they they, they become oh. irate because something they believe is wrong and i'm just like the facts are right there i, I, I don't know i think that's the tough the toughest part of it is the cognitive dissonance. I think there's this, with reptiles especially, but with a lot of things, there's something I call like society science. And if you are taught society science for so long, it's like your brain literally just cannot believe actual science. Well, yeah, this, these things the that so were Yeah, the society science is just so loud and, it, you know, breathing down your throat. That's not the expression. Your neck, your throat. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever it is. But yeah, society science is just so loud. It's, your brain thinks it's factual. I mean, and you've seen it so much all throughout history. You see, you've seen it in slavery. You saw it in World War II with the Nazis. Now, I'm not saying that those at the Roundup are Nazis. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> Rattlesnake Nazis. Yeah, no. I mean, it, like, it's just that, you know, the... The willingness to not be open, you know, it's especially in today's day and age. I'm so tired of people screaming liberal, bigot, you know, it's just like, you know, like everyone's on one side of the extreme or the other. And it's like just in life in general. And so people are starting to reflect that on 
every part of their life, you know, um, which is better, blue ink or black ink? People, yeah. I just wish that people would realize that no matter what you believe, we're both, you know, or we're all living on the same earth and we're all, we all depend on these animals for our livelihood in one way or another. I tell people all the time that the, like being a rattlesnake is like, if you've ever worked the night shift, when you do your job right, nobody knows what you do just because they come in and <laughs> done. But the moment something's messed up, everyone knows exactly what you do. And rattlesnakes, they're an apex predator. That's exactly what they are. They regulate rodents, you know, which regulates fleas and ticks, which regulates, you know, disease, cancer virus, rat bite and tick fever, Lyme disease, you know, um, Parvo. I just had a dog pass away from Parvo. And it's just, there's so much. And, you know, people just, you know, they think they're the most dangerous thing in the world. And it's like, you know, marshmallows kill more people a year than uh, rattlesnakes do. Wait, what? Wait a second. Wait, wait, second. wait what? <laughs> yeah, stay away from pizza at Easter time. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, it, it's about five people a year. And most of that's due to anaphylactic shock. Um, you know, same as if, if somebody was allergic to peanuts and they're sitting there eating peanut butter. And um, that, that's what kills the most amount of people. But that's why I also keep Benadryl in my wallet. Just because if I ever do get bit doing what I do, you know, the thing you want is you want to get those antihistamines in you. And, you know, that's going to help your body uh, react better to the, you know, if it starts to trying to go in shock. And so I chew it. Um, I've never been bit, but, you know, everyone has their protocols. And since I'm out and about and I'm herping, and I, I, I encourage a lot of people who go herping and have risk of getting bit, you know, I always tell them, just keep Benadryl, you know, and drink and water. So, but... Uh, and now what are kind of... I mean, do you have a bunch of people calling you when snake things happen? I mean, are people more likely to call you or are they more likely to kill the snakes or what kind of things are you dealing with? It, it, it kind of depends. It depends on the person. Um, more people than a lot of people realize are for the ecological side. And so I always, I always joke around that, you know, you have new country and you have old country. People who have lived out in the country, you know, have worked with these snakes, you know, and also know the damage that rodents do. You know, they're, they're out there. They say, hey, I know, um, I, I, I know that they have their purpose. They stop the rodents. I don't mind them out there. I just don't want them on my porch. You know, new country, those people who think driving lifted trucks and listening to Luke Bryan, those people, you know, they, they think that's country. Those are the kill them all, burn it down kind of people. And, um, Joe always makes the fun Florida of me. Georgia line. Joe people. always makes fun of me for liking Luke Bryan in Florida Georgia line. He says it's not real country. <laughs> <laughs> it's about what, as country as uh, uh, Olive Garden oh. is Italian. But... What were you saying, Max? Oh, I said, what's that song that Luke Bryan does where he just sits there and he goes, oh, oh. oh I don't <laughs> know that song. It's one of his singles. I don't know. That, that's my kind of night. <laughs> There's so many good ones. I like Play It Again that and Mood, but different story. Go Luke Bryan listens to this podcast. podcast. Go you know. watch Bo Burnham's video on Stadium Country. It's on YouTube. It's about five minutes long. Like, it is... It, it points out every little thing, so it's um, that's wrong with Luke Ryan. But yeah, no. I, I mean, <laughs> so as far as the people who call me, though, they uh, sometimes they get porch calls. It kind of comes in waves. So fall and spring are our biggest times. You know, winter is definitely our biggest time. But people start seeing more in the fall and spring when snakes start moving back to their den sites. And if that den's close to their place, then we get the calls. We come. We you know, we get the population and we tell them exactly, you know, hey, you know, whether it's seal up your house, you have this shipping container, elevate it, put some cross ties under it, you know, and we tell them exactly what they need to do. We tell them, hey, this is going to help a lot or this is going to be a process. You know, there's so many variables that go into it, whether, you know, you're looking at ecological balance, how much food can that habitat support, you know, because it might be able to support snakes great, but if it doesn't support the rodents, then, you know, uh, then they won't be there as often. So, I mean, we're statewide. We I've done jobs, you know, down in Corpus Christi, up in Amarillo, um, East Texas. We've worked with copperheads. Uh, I've even done a job for the U.S. Border Patrol 
where I've been in the tunnels between the U.S. and Mexico border uh, looking for snakes. And that, that's one of the <coughs> other, like, second, second biggest video. And Did I mean, you see El Chapo or not? Nah? <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> I mean, I found a brick, but maybe I shouldn't tell that on No. <laughs> <laughs> If so wait. you get a hand in the mail, you know why. It's because I make jokes on streams. How does that work? They just call you up and they're like, hey, Max, this is the U.S. government. Um, we need you to come help us out. <laughs> so I contract with the company. The company's uh, Big Country Snake Removal. Um, and the dude who runs it, you know, usually they message him on Facebook or call him. Um, so most of the land on these, kind of, like government land, it's, it's kind of a weird bureaucratic situation. They actually lease it and they... And they lease, and this big conglomerate company actually buys all this land that governments are likely to use, and they lease it from them. And so this private company is getting a lot of money from our government. Um, you know, the wheels of bureaucracy. So uh, they, I guess, Fish and Wildlife contacted them, who contacted Border Patrol, and somehow it got to us, um, just because you know there's not many people who want to do it, and on government property, they can't just. You know, unless it's a threat, they can't just go around killing snakes. And, uh, but yeah, no, I mean, that was a really interesting job. We had an all access key card, um, got us anywhere on the property. Ooh, I know you went sneaking around. Yeah. So, you know, I <laughs> sold that card for so much money. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, I mean, it was a good time. We also went up to the Franklin Mountains, um, looking for different rattlesnakes, you know, doing a little herping. Um, as far as getting rattlesnakes from Mexico, um, luckily everything we found was on the uh, on the U.S. side. That's where we mainly worked. I just I went to I just needed to go to Mexico, so I went to look <laughs> at possible den areas on that side. You know, just to say I went under. And um, but yeah, everything we found was on the U.S. side. Everything in Mexico is controlled federally, so if you want to go and collect to apply it's even it, to even apply it's a thousand dollars and you have to have a reason for going over there you have to name the species you're trying to get and then even then some of the scientists that you know if you go and you're saying hey i want five you know of a certain mexican rock rattlesnake you know then they'll probably take two or three and they pickle them you know so those animals die but you know for science and research and i mean they can deny you and not give you a reason, and you just gave the Mexican government a thousand dollars. So Mexico is really hard as far as exotics goes. Um, that, and if you ever went to even photograph, um, then you know you're also worried about you're on a border city, so you got to worry a little more about cartel. Oh, you know, just a little thing, cartel. Yeah, you know, no big deal. Sinaloa, uh, Los Zetos. I, I don't know, mods. Sounds like you know them, actually. That's the weird thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I think, you know, to get a little bit political, you know, for me, it's like people like to for people to ignore, you know, the problems that do come from Mexico just because of their poverty and their situation. Like you can't ignore it is like for me, it's like. Of course, you want to stop drugs and you want to stop things. But at the same time, Americans spend billions on these drugs anyway. So it's like it, it kind of goes back and forth. So it's like, do we need a wall? It's like I'm all for stopping crime. You know, like I don't, I don't think that's a race situation. But again, I'm, I'm a moderate. You know, I'm down the middle. It's like, like, would a wall work? I don't think so. But I'm not an expert. I've been twice. <laughs> So, You've been to the tunnels, man. You can yeah. tunnel right under that bitch. And then, you know, I've been to Arizona, Yuma County, you know, spitting distance from Mexico. You know, Border Patrol stopped us so many times. <laughs> but, but, so, yeah, so I'm yeah. pretty middle, middle of the road on that. You know, of course, nobody, like, wants fent fentanyl that kills people coming in. Um, well, I mean, doctors also give that out, so that's awkward. Right. So, um, <laughs> so again, like this is from talking to the Border Patrol. What happens is when the cartel wants to um, take control of an area in the U.S. and have their people sell um, a certain drug, what they do is they bring in a lot of a bad drug that will, has something in it that kills people. A lot of times it's through heroin. 
And when pe- a bunch of people die, um, either the dealer dies or he gets arrested. And then their dealers come in. Mm. And they take control of that area. So um, it, it's a really messed up situation. And, of course, yeah, I mean, doctors, you're, you're definitely right, though. Doctors do give it out. But it's like it, it's all it's a violent game of supply and demand. You know, I, I thought the reptile industry had some things to work out. But damn, <laughs> <laughs> like shoot you don't you don't see me over there going man ryan's got some nice retics bye ryan <laughs> i mean someone it, out there might be plotting it against it, ryan it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't vary too much if you're thinking of you know especially say the 70s and 80s from when you're smuggling and it all seems very intertangled in that sense Whoa, Ryan. weird timing. Ryan Sullivan literally just started watching right as you said his name. <laughs> he said, we talked about drugs this week, and I didn't get an invite. <laughs> so. That's hilarious. Oh, man. It's like I said his name, and he showed up. I, to be honest, I haven't even been reading these comments. It's hard. It's, yeah, don't it's even nearly impossible yourself. to try to read the chat and – uh. Yeah, and watch and talk. It's hard. That's why I he does most of the talking and I do most of the reading. Right. Like <laughs> like I, I, I t- you know, I told everyone on Facebook, I was like, Hey, I'm gonna go do the stream. I've been running around all day. I'll come back and you know, I'll talk about everything and then uh and then I told people, Hey, I'll call you after the stream, I'll message you after the stream. Um I I don't sit behind my computer all day and I guess like or like I don't sit there on my phone, you know, so uh, it's been like it, it, it's been a. I probably look tired. I tried to put a light in a way that, you know, <laughs> but no. I mean, it, it's so like. Um, oh yeah, Port City Python. So that, that's uh, what I talked to you guys before the stream. Um, you don't so, have to. You don't yeah, have to talk yeah, about that yeah. Anymore, yeah. Dude. Yeah, that's the FBI post that. Um, again, everything's got to go through the lawyer because. Yeah, but uh, there, there are, I think he emailed me back, so they'll get the response after the stream. So, um, also the person who I actually made that agreement with, um, this person's ex husband, um, he messaged me and he's gonna talk to a lawyer, he's gonna make a post. So, um, uh, yeah, that'll all happen later. <laughs> let's yeah, talk about let read the show. So, yeah, let's leave, like, you know, and I'm not trying to bring that here, so. Uh, Let's talk about your shirt. That's why I said, "Don't read the chat, man." <laughs> don't, read, don't, don't read the chat, man. Well, I mean, but Ryan's here. True. I, any important thing that comes for the chat from the chat, I I say it. Oh yeah, like hey, I'm the I'm Golden Girl Secretary. Um, but yeah, your shirt. I've been wanting to ask, how was the most recent in ARBC since we left? We don't get to so, experience. We, I, I had made an arrangement with uh, Andy um, from Southwest uh, or Southern Reptile Supply. It's not Southwest um, to go and film for him. And honestly, that's really the only reason I went. Um, after we had that puppy have Parvo, I've spent so much time. Um, I mean, I camped out for four days on a living room floor, and I, I didn't leave that spot. And just every you know thirty minutes, giving him milliliters of you know just different mixes, stuff with. Uh, you know, because he, he got super skinny, and uh, so I mean, we just tried to keep him hydrated. See what what's, a, what's the background? Did you like just rescue a dog or something? What happened? Yeah, so uh, basically, um, the shelter was doing uh, name your own price just because uh, there were so many. Um, and my girlfriend had to ha- had one dog, um, and she took on we took on another dog together. Um, that uh, this guy out in Holly, which you think Abilene Small Try Holly. Um, so we had a blue healer and a white healer and we wanted a red, you know, kind of patriotic. <laughs> so, uh, we, yeah, it was a name your own price. So we, we went and, you know, I was asleep and she FaceTimes me. She's like, can we get this dog? And I was like, <laughs> okay. So, um, but yeah, we got a call saying its siblings had, had Parvo. And so we went and got it tested. It tested negative, had diarrhea that night. The next day we took it to the vet. And I mean, it was, I, I slept maybe three hours a night for, you know, mm-hmm. so I'm, you know, and that's what I was trying to do today is catch up on everything. Um, 
just because. And Parvo has a pretty small like uh, survival rate, right? Especially in puppies. Um, so there's a lot of variables to it. Um, untreated it has an 80% fatality rate. Um, but this puppy, you know, just being from the pound, he was already a little bit malnourished, you know, so when his intestines and stomach became inflamed, I mean, it was really tough. I mean, like the puppy, like he, he died in my arms. I was devastated. My girlfriend was at work. My brother and sister-in-law came over. I mean, like, like, if you I, can't I, 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 face right now. <laughs> it was, it was like, <laughs> devastated and um and so yeah basically the only reason i went to npr uh npr narbc was uh to because i promised andy i would film and you know like i i, I had you know some worked out with him so i stayed but i did get to see uh brian cusco i did get to see ryan sullivan of course um uh i got i picked up one of his hot sauces <laughs> Um, uh, and then, uh, just talked to a couple people, kind of set up a couple plans. Um, and, uh, but yeah, I, I left probably about one o'clock, but I got there at like seven. Well, I got there and I stayed, I got there around three o'clock in the morning. Um, and I stayed with the guys from TLA exotics. And if people in the stream don't know, um, who they are, uh, they're one of the few people who have the hydrogen. Um, and that is one of Ben Rennick's legacies. Ben Rennick proved out that gene. There's only like 20 people in the world who have one. So, and I was there and I stayed, stayed with those guys. Uh, and then the next morning woke up super early again, got two hours of sleep, three hours of sleep and went to an ARBC film left by 12. So, yeah, so if no one knows, uh, Abilene's like two and a half hours from from Arlington. Oh, so yeah, you yeah. must have left really I fucking. Just early. Everyone from Texas. Wait, what'd you say? Sorry. Oh, uh, I said I just assume everyone's from Texas. Oh yeah, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's basically its own country. But yeah, I mean, there was a lot I wanted to talk to. Um, kind of make some more plans going into the future. Um, you know. I'm, tying up loose ends from 2018 and then uh, moving forward. So don't you, do you normally VIN in ARBC? Um, it, it depends. Um, I think I do like every other one, I would say just because this, um, with how much I like to travel on, you know, with my job and stuff, um, and, you know, living out where I live, I, to find somebody consistent to help you out all the time, you know, that that's, a lot of work and uh, I didn't feel like 1099 ing someone so I just uh, I just had volunteers come and help but to find and I probably should but it's kind of like the back and forth like at what size video and video creation should you get an editor you know uh, so just kind of I'm sorry I'm I've got too much stimulus up here so I keep looking up this way <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, so I, it was just finding somebody consistent. I try and kind of keep my numbers small, so I have quality rather than quantity. And so I trailed off. I forget where I, I was going with that. <laughs> but it seems like you, as far as building your collection, you'd rather, I mean, build the media end of, yeah, I you mean, know, Max's view per se, more so than Max's morphs. I mean, they kind of feed each other. So I, I do, I love the hobby and, you know, it's just like, as far as the day to day goes, you know, you, you start to realize the more you're in this hobby and the more you're, um, you know, li you know, live life in general, your most valuable asset is time. So, you know, like, that's why as soon as it's financially viable, I would love to just pay an editor because, and then just have me proof it just because, editing is so redundant and I'm very out there. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm constantly going, just, you know, sitting at home. Um, and, and that's the reason why, like in the daytime, you know, if, if I'm awake in, like in the early days and getting stuff done in product, being productive that way, it's usually with rattlesnake stuff. Um, a lot of my, oh, um, the other end of things tends to be late at night just because my phone or my Facebook isn't just going off at that point and I can just sit there and focus. So, um, but I, w I would say they, they're kind of growing at 
I mean, Max, Max's Productions is a little bit younger, so I would say it's growing a little bit faster, but they're, they're pretty equal. Um, but as far I just, I guess I'm not to the size yet where it's like I constantly have snakes year round. You know, um, I'm not vending every two shows like, you know, some of the bigger breeders and, um, or, you know, two shows a month. So I, I just kind of needed something to, and then of course, rattlesnakes have their seasons, but <laughs> snakes, uh, <laughs> but so I just needed something for every day, you know, like, Hey, you know, this, like what's going to bring in money. So my hands are in a lot of cookie jars trying to level everything out and, um, but yeah, so I would say the video production, it, it's definitely something that's going to help with, uh, uh, I guess, the normal just more steady overhead and living costs, yeah. and then everything else is just bonus. Because we did, we did like the same exact, the same exact thing. I mean, yeah. as far as the way I did it, as far as like I started a production company now, I usually edit like podcasts for a living. And so now it's like I'm at the chair now all day so it sucks when it comes to video it's like i do not want to be in a chair anymore at all i don't have i don't have rattlesnake relocations to do to, to, <laughs> to keep me busy you know to get you out of the chair and get right. outside um do you have two monitors nope nope not that fancy okay do you have premiere yes yes okay here's my the best advice get two monitors and then look up the pancake method because that makes editing so fast, and that was the best thing I did. Like, do you use the pancake method? I have no idea what you're talking about. So rather, like, basically to break it down, rather than going, you know, over and like, okay, click this clip, let's watch it. Basically, you put all of your footage just on top, and you cut it, and any and like so, and you just like edit the parts that you're going to use, and you bring those down. So everything in that second sequence panel is just just the stuff that you're going to use everything else is extraneous then you delete that top, then you delete your top pancake and and then move that one up and then you create another layer another sequence and you move them and you put them in order and then when everything's in order you can do your color correct audio so um it just helps to have a second monitor so it's like you know your your workspace is up because otherwise you know it's going to be you know so small I don't, I don't know if I do that. That's why I can actually show you. But that way you can actual, actually view your footage in a sizable con content so you don't end up picking something that's blurry. So, hmm. See, what I do is I just – I preview the clips. I – it's hard to explain kind of what I do, but I'm probably going to bore people anyway. Yeah, no one cares. So. <laughs> I, I basically create a rough cut first and then refine it. And then music comes. And then if I'm doing sound design, I'll do that. If I'm doing color, I'll do that. But right. yeah, I don't know. It's not fast. I definitely know that. But my, <laughs> my, my audio is pretty fast just because I do those all day. And audition right. super easy, super fast. But, but yeah, that's that how compression on there. You know, your high pass filter, call it a day. Yeah, like I have a preset that I can usually do <clears throat> for all my podcasts. Okay, so. snakes. Okay, snakes. <laughs> okay, yeah, snakes. So. <laughs> so, okay, you don't keep any venomous, right? Um, I do. Oh, never mind. Sorry. Explain those. Um, let's see. I've got a speckled rattlesnake, um, a white a white speck. Um, before anyone asks, I have all my licenses and everything. Um, I've got a red speck. Um, and then uh, it's kind of a conglomerate of animals where we have, you know, a bunch of other rattlesnakes of uh, different species and uh, cobras, of course, Heloderma, um, Wagglers, Echistrodon. So, uh, Whoa, I have never seen any of those. I don't even know what you. those words are called. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what words you're saying. Mouths, um, except this one's a Mexican cousin of the cottonmouth. Um, and then, uh, let's see, like just different cobras. Uh, I'm trying to kind of uh, Heloderma's Gila monsters and Mexican beaded lizards. Um, so it's uh, we're working on um, the guy I relocate snakes for. Um, we're working on opening up a serpentarium, and it's going to be just outside Abilene, and that's going to be a major way, you know, because honestly, like the best thing for the rattlesnake roundup you know, is just to educate people because, you know, that cognitive dissonance runs so thick. So you're like, hey, here's all these facts. 
Um, but we're also working on Mamba's, you know, just uh, uh, Russell's Viper, you know, pretty venomous stuff. Uh, and so, uh, of course, Gaboons and Rhinos. Um, so a lot, a lot of species, but they'll be right outside Abilene, and I'll definitely do a video tour of that. But it, it's a process. Um, it, uh, he owns the land. It's just about pouring a concrete slab. slab, slab. <clears throat> um, so would you be part, part owner in that? Um, no, not part owner, but um, I, I think I would be able to outsource crawling under houses and getting covered in stickers and um, all, maybe like, upgrade honestly, a reptile keeper or something. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so I would just be uh, you know, helping maintain the property out there, working with the snakes, doing education events. Um, another so, jar for you to put your hand in. Right. So, um, and definitely less in the, cause I love working with men and the snakes and I love educating the public, you know, when I go talking to people, but I mean, some of the holes I crawl under are, are tough. You know, they're, it's, you know, you're, I've slid my face through mud to get to a dry area, you know, just you're sliding your face just right there. You know, I mean, there's times it sucks and, you know, like it's times like that, you know, you're not looking, like there's people who want to catch the snakes for money or there's people who want to catch the snakes to make not, you know, like all those guys, they won't do what we do because, you know, like for us, it's not just about helping people with the snakes. It's about helping the snakes from the people. So, you know, uh, and I feel like the other people don't care about that. Right. So being on the ecological side on it, or, if, you know, like um, some people get mad that we charge for it, but it's like, you know, you're driving, you know, up to six hours you know you're um you know one way and then six hours back um and then you're crawling under places there's a lot of sucky situations so i mean it's like yeah there's a charge to it but it's like that is definitely not the drive to do what we do and i mean everything we do we do it as excellent as possible so how do those like the videos you have of people with basically dens underneath their house i mean how does that come to be um i mean like it, it boils down to a couple things. It's either they built their house in rattlesnake habitat. My biggest video is going to be the rattlesnake den being removed from under uh, uh, a house in uh, Winthorpe, Texas, just south, just south of Wichita Falls. And uh, it was 60 snakes, but their house was on top of a hip south facing slope. So all the snakes, they just kind of went under there. And then there was a tarp. Um, there's a tarp that's laid down under a lot of these double wides uh, as part of a moisture barrier, some sort of new regulation, and snakes love them. And I mean, we, and those jobs, they're, they're kind of freaky just because you're crawling a little bit and you cut with a knife to peek under with your hook and, you know, you're seeing how many snakes you can see. You crawl a little bit, and I mean, there's times you put your hand down and something moves and you're like, okay, let's crawl back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's a very methodical process, you know, because you know of the nature of things. But luckily, those snakes are cold, and usually they're bunched up together, and they're not moving much. Um, so it's it's again, it's very methodical. Um, but but that was just a, a hunting cabin that had been moved into their property. Uh, another thing is gassing. Gassing. What happens is you have the you have den sites which have crevices and rodent mittens and there's tons of air seals and air pockets where these snakes can get away from gasoline fumes. So snakes, you know, basically have one functioning lung and it's a big irritant to them. So they, I mean, these dens, you know, there's a hole this big that can go 20 feet back and down in whichever way. It's kind of like an ant farm if you turned it on your side. And so there's tons of places for them to escape. But the communal part of that den is can be tarnished. It can be ruined, and they won't use that den again. So it that can put that has pushed them into residential areas. And we've talked to people who say, "Hey, we've lived here 20, 30 years." You know, these older folks, and they said we've never had trouble with snakes until the neighbor went hunters we'll let hunters go around gassing, and now we have all these snakes showing up on our porch. And so, I mean, it's. Basically, habitat destruction is what, you know, or people encroaching on their habitat. Um, and that's why, you know, so many people, because what snakes are looking for is a is an area to get below the frost line, of course. 
since they're ectothermic, you know, I, I think it's about 35 degrees that they can get to before they die. Um, so they're just trying to get below the frost line to where, you know, they can get to an area where it doesn't freeze. It's interesting. And I guess I was thinking like, I, uh, I don't know how to phrase this. I would think there'd be enough home or home on. Why can I say that? Homeowners. There you go. Who are pissed about the hunters, you know, basically forcing these snakes into or under their homes that they'd raise enough ruckus well, their, to have an effect on the is, hunters. Hey, you can come over here and take all these snakes. Sorry, them. Probably not that was, that was, you guys can come over here and, you know, <laughs> get all these snakes out of here because I hate snakes. No, and my they'll call, here they'll call his here. company, but why won't they? Be pissed at the hunters because who are making this happen. I believe that they think that they're solving the problem, right? So yeah, uh, yeah. There's that huge misconception there. Um, and then, I mean, there's been people who call the JCs, um, the people who run the run the Roundup in Sweetwater, and ask them to come out, and they won't crawl under houses. They won't do it. And then, and then we get called after. So uh, basically, yeah, you're definitely right about the misconception that they think, you know. Like they they see the snake on their porch, and rather than thinking that it bends under their house, um, unless they've seen a snake go under their house, um, then they think, oh well, we definitely need the roundup because I'm seeing more and more snakes. Oh, they're, they're invading. You know, it's like so. Um, so they're just not educated that the hunters are causing. Right. So the people to we talked to in my video, you know, I, I wanted to approach people and I wanted to put them in the video, say, hey, would you be willing to talk about it? A lot of people were uncomfortable because, you know, every, like in Sweetwater, everyone knows everyone. And I mean, it, you're put, you, they put themselves at risk on being put on blast. And, you know, it's like, the, like if you saw some of the comment threads, I think there was only one main thread uh which was in the open chat for animals from my local town where people were just like you know oh we need the snakes you want snakes by my children you know all that and it's like if people treated me like that if somebody went on footage like that they knew personally like no nobody wants that you know they they get trashed for it so I think if you go really hard on that angle with say, someone like the JCs, all they do is dig themselves deeper. As far as like, if you're like, if you come from an aggressive angle and you're like, hey, like you're a piece of shit, this and that, it's like, no, they're just regular people. It's just that they happen to grow up in Sweetwater and that happens to be a thing that they do every year. And they happen to have those ideas in which they think that the rattlesnakes are taking over all this other shit. It doesn't mean that it's true, but it's, in some ways, I mean, culturally put into them, you know, from birth. Society living in science. Sweetwater. I mean, if, if you look at the video that I put out, then, um, you, like, you'll see, like, them encouraging a little girl to, like, skin a snake. And she's sitting here, like, on, on the verge of tears. And they're like, yeah, do it. Yeah. And, um, I, I mean, like, it is a huge cultural thing. It's a huge, you know, traditional thing. It's, and I mean, that, that's what makes it kind of so hard, you know, that and the JCs have friends in high places. So the number one thing is going to definitely be education. I was actually approached because, you know, there were still some people who were like, well, Crowfab might not do it, but, you know, other venom facilities use, you know, rattlesnake venom. It's like, no, they don't. <laughs> Like there's BTG International and then there's Red Rock Biologics. That's it. So I was actually approached by uh, a representative from CrowFab asking me to interview. Um, so when I go down to the Houston Venom Conference uh, to interview him, I'm also interviewing one of the top toxicologists in the world, um, or excuse me, in the nation. I'm not sure of world. I mean, how many toxicologists are there? <laughs> but, uh, Brian Greg, uh, I think, is the number one in the world, I would say, in my you know? biased opinion uh brian greg fry out of uh he's in australia oh yeah so see i, I mean like and then i just started uh I, I talked with some people over at venom life um basically they were selling t-shirts and stickers and different things like that um about the different things they do uh because they talk with a lot of uh and that this was at narbc and they talked with a lot of people about um how it's made, what's made, and, you know, and uh, different things like that. So 
so I'm also going to talk with them. That was probably a big highlight of NARBC. Um, but so clearly, if you haven't watched Max's video, you guys should go watch the video and not to toot someone's horn, but you should also watch this guy's sweet water video from now, what, two years ago? We're like YouTube banned on it, so you can do whatever. You it's can, probably hard to find. It's true, because it got. Um, I just put all the actual shit that I wanted to put it in. It got there banned there. multiple times on Facebook. But, but um, I think it's still out there. I'm not finished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you uh, try and monetize? What's that? Did you try and monetize that video? Did no, you, I mean I didn't care about it because it got demonetized even when I when I did monetize yeah. it. So it's not a big deal. It's just Facebook, like we had it Facebook, going for a while, got, and then oh, yeah. it got the the like cover because there was innards and different types of things in it. So um, so I, I didn't know like Facebook policy at that time, so I couldn't evade it like I could now if I knew. Right. Facebook in general has become a lot harder to post on. Um, I won't talk production stuff too much, uh, but I'll kind of highlight this. Basically, what what's happened lately with Facebook is they have a lot of these bigger companies, you know, like the Young Turks or now this media and all these companies that um, they, they allow them to monetize their videos um, because they're these big companies or whatever. And as a result, Facebook gets a kickback for some of the advertisement. So now they're prioritizing those videos over smaller creators. Mm -hmm. And so if you've been looking at your projections on Facebook, you're reaching, what, a fifth of the people um, you used to? Um, Sean, Sean Gray from the Herp Shows and I, I mean, we sat for probably an hour talking about how he advertises and, you know, how, like, we, because we both study the algorithm and how it's so much harder to reach people. And you really, like Facebook, the way it's set up now is you have to spend so much, the more you Facebook say, ads don't even work, work anymore. So, yeah, it's very frustrating. It's hard to get anything out. Well, there. even yeah, if you're just trying to get an organic reach off your page, it's not possible. I mean, you huh? really have to pay for it if you really want reach. And yeah. then, and even then, not as uh, it doesn't convert as well as it did, you know, say a year ago or so. Oh, exactly. Like I, I was doing. A, I'm, I'm in the middle. Oh, yeah, uh, maybe I should announce this. I'm in the middle of a ball python giveaway. Um, it's going to be a yellow belly firefly. And I shared that on Facebook um, because you can either comment on the video on YouTube or, uh, and follow the steps, or you can follow the Facebook steps. And the reach from YouTube has been amazing. The reach from Facebook sucked. You know, like they said, they, they actually flagged it when I tried to boost it for like five bucks. And they said it might be a negative experience. <laughs> like, I'm literally giving somebody a snake. They didn't tell me that when I had my negative experience. I spent like 70 bucks and didn't get any conversion off of it one time. I, and I was just like, did they didn't tell me that I was going to lose 70 bucks. You literally have to watch it every day. And honestly, like rather than spending 70 bucks on one, spend 35 on two, see which one is performing better, and then shut that one down and put more money in the first one. You know, and then you got to mm. keep watching it because just, yeah, Facebook sucks now. Um, and it, and, but that's why. Anyway, yeah. snake. <laughs> um, okay, ballpark on, oh, I'm doing terrible with words tonight. People who said yes to interview versus the amount of people you asked, what percentage would you think that would be at Sweetwater? Oh, I, let's see. The people who, hold on, the people who said yes, they would be at Sweetwater versus no. The people, so you were interviewing people at Sweetwater, correct? Yes, I was interviewing a lot of snake hunters and the JCs. So the amount of people you asked to be on the interview versus the amount of people who said yes. So I went to kind of one of every booth. Um, I, I still have all the raw footage. Um, but what, what I did was I like, I went up to him and I was like, Hey, can you explain the station or you, can you explain what goes on here? And some people, the only reason they would say no is, Oh, I don't like talking on camera here, this guy. And every other person, you know, like it was either directly yes, or they were. Okay. Me. It seems like, I mean, and you pointed out in the video though, that they kind of had scripted answers to everything. They did. I, I mean, and like, and you know, I, that's one thing I don't want is I don't want people to think I was trying to be malicious, malicious, and I just took 
certain parts. Yeah, like you weren't like totally disrespectful either. You know, you dance that line as far as the truth and being disrespectful. You know, you tried to put out the facts laid out without, right. you know, saying like these idiots or, you know, like I mean, anything this, like This right here, I can unplug it. So, because I'm, it's not being streamed on. I was, this, it wasn't a GoPro. It wasn't a hidden camera. It was a DSLR. Um, it was back when I was shooting on a 3200 and um, they knew they were being filmed every step of the way. I mean, it's, it's not like I was trying to get the inside scoop. I mean, it was just like, that's literally what they tell the public. And, you know, and that was the angle, you know, what I did tell them was I was doing a country living blog and that I lived in Holly. Yeah. I mean, I guess Sweetwater is a part of country living. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, so, yeah. And we should also mention that, like, this venue, it's not a Tinley Park, exactly. <laughs> it's a, it is a dirt floor fucking, like, rodeo. Oh, I've never been, I told mode. people a lot. Um, you got, you have people sitting there drinking Coors Lights. <laughs> I don't drink Coors Light because they sponsor the Roundup. And really? They have that big Coors can inflatable out front. Um, and, and apparently they have that every year and, but yeah, people like they go and drink and then they try and like, you know, like learn about snakes and it's like, mm. and I mean, there's footage I'll, I'll sit here and I'll pull it up. There was a, actually an animal vendor there. Um, and it's somebody, Sean Gray banned from, a banned from all the herp shows see if i can find it and this person had bearded dragons with stuck sheds let me turn this around well i've seen some pretty like legitimate keepers and breeders who have been to roundups and stuff like that yeah let me uh shut this up so i mean th this is just some of the conditions those animals were in um of course i couldn't focus or anything oh yeah here's their bearded dragon wait so they actually Brought, brought live animals, animals to the to roundup? Sell? Yeah, like to sell. This is their bearded uh, dragon. Whoa. Is that a silky? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, so that animal's fucked. Let's see if I can read that. I'm not sure. Um, they so have for, for people on, to on the... Animal. Yeah, yeah. And of course, common snapping turtles. And these animals, like that bearded dragon for people on the download, had stuck shed pretty much. Oh, Every animal was in awful condition. Um, I was just on low battery, but yeah, that's that's in my roundup folder. Um, so. We should share roundup folders. Ooh. Huh? We can make. I want to. It's hard because I wanted to make like a more documentary style long form video on the roundup, but I don't think I was so elementary at the time. I mean, this is almost three years ago, and I was elementary at the time of like how to shoot a movie <laughs> or how to, how to even shoot a video. So it's like I feel like I won't be able to put it together into something. But, you guys uh, should, but I may you guys should, uh, should collab. I mean, on it, so I watched I watched Mark Lauderham's video. I watched the Vice documentary from the dude who injects himself with venom. Oh, um, yeah. I, I've uh, I've watched other stuff, and like that's why I said in the video, it's like if you make a video about him, you protest it in any way. Like in, in the other YouTube video, they say, "Hey, we believe in freedom of speech," but uh. Get out of here, or you'll be arrested for criminal trespass. Uh, I think that was a device documentary um, where he was interviewing somebody else who made a video about it. And, uh, but yeah, no, so like I'm well aware that if I try and go, they're going to tell me to leave. I can't interview anybody else. But I mean, th that's the big thing about education is, you know, like when we're like, because now, like, it's becoming more common knowledge that they don't use venom for the roundup. And that, that's going to be the big one because that's what people think is the you know benefit and population control. And so, like, what, now that people are like, oh, well, this isn't a good thing, you know, educating people, what are they going to start banning cameras from there? You know, like, you know, yeah, I'm not allowed to go to, but I, like, I'll tell everyone, you know, go ask a question, you know, say, hey, why do you do this? What do you do with the venom? And watch them lie right to your face because if they'll probably try and tell me something different um they'll probably try and tell me to get out um but you know if like if they keep telling these people this stuff you know like 
they're going to have to be honest with what they do. Um, and honestly, the, the, the main thing I think would be beneficial, and I think a huge milestone would be stopping the gassing. That would be huge. Right. I think also, as, yeah, as much as educating people about the venom is educating people about the processes they're using to get these rattlesnakes, they are not always truthful about that and the effects it has. So they try and say they just use the fumes, but I went to, like, it's on their website. You go to the Texas Parks and Wildlife document, and and you scroll down. It talks about how, it talks about the effects that it has on crickets, um, indigos. Um, but also, they're not doing anything about it. So right, that's it, awkward, too. So, and, and, like, you know, the more, like, the more other people are approaching him and go, the fuck you lying? You know, I, I was in trying to get kicked out i wasn't you know like you know cause a stir i was you know because surprise here's this video now um because it's almost been a year uh that i've been sitting on this footage but you know if you try and call these people out they'll turn around and walk away they're like oh you're one of those fucking liberals they just believe that they're right and there's no reason to hide in a way like when we talked to them they were forthcoming with everything because they thought you know it's fine. Yeah. We'll just say that it goes to research. I mean, <laughs> like, I, it, like, people are like, you're using everything you can to try and make these people look bad. It's like, honestly, I held back. There's a K-Texas article where one of the models there for their uh, pageant said, oh, oh, I think this is okay because I learned that snakes don't feel pain. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, well, <laughs> like, there's tons of stuff I did not put in, you know, and it like because i tried to be methodical you know it, it's not about like trying to trash their name that's not gonna you know like it's just gonna make them a martyr but you know really it's about the education and it's like hey just this is facts like yeah. straight up straight facts i well i think when i'm like 80 i'm gonna remember my experience at sweetwater because that was one of the most it's Adam, almost it was something a, that I, seems like you would see in a third world country. Was, exactly. Like if it was any other animal, like mm -hmm. even if it was a mouse, like like any other, a chi even chickens, you know, like like as as y'all know, I'm vegan, so it's like haha, everything I said is discredited. <laughs> you know, so it's it's like even those animals, if they did what they did at this show, you know, then yeah, they'd be prosecuted. So. Yeah, and we're not talking about a few animals, by the way. If you guys don't know about the rattlesnake roundup, like the year before we went, eighteen thousand pounds of rattlesnakes. Mm -hmm. 18, and now they now yeah. they limit it, and really that's just because of supply. Yeah, there's a cap. Well, yeah. yeah, because yeah, like you said, uh, buyers are drying up. I'm sure because oh, def definitely they could not sell them, you know. And I mean. Because you're doing things in a dirt floor fucking coliseum. I mean, there's not many places who want meat from there. There's not many people who want venom from there. I mean, all these different. I mean, things. okay. So I don't eat meat. Um, I've been vegan for about three years. But even if I did eat meat, what like why would you eat something that like eats rodents? Like it, you know, other than the animal, like the rodents that we feed our, you know. Uh, we feed our snakes that are in happy, healthy conditions. Like rodents are disgusting, and uh, I, I love always telling this story because I was out on a uh, on an oil rig and I was doing a relocation, and I had this like Mexican guy tell me he goes, "Oh man, it's you know as long as it's not city rats, then it's okay. The country rats are good." And I'm like, "What?" So, <laughs> yeah, there's a difference. Just like city people and country people. Right. You know, I don't oh, all of them. Clean and pure country people. <laughs> yeah. so. But I think it's, yeah, that, that whole thing's just, well, it's, it's mind boggling that it's still, still around. And that Texas Parks and Wildlife, I mean, has been. So, um, I feel like I was going to say something else. Probably, but I have a question. Yeah. Not in what we're talking about, but so you're talking about opening up your own, own serpterium, serpterium, whatever. Have you been to the one that's outside, I don't know what they even call it, outside of Austin? Remember? Um, no, I haven't. I've heard good things about it. And then, uh, let me type this in so I don't say his name wrong. Yeah, like Texas has a lot of little wildlife 
parks. Some of them, they range from like total backwoods <laughs> bullshit to like almost zoo facilities. So it's kind of, you know, like. Right. There's that one that Evan and Ryan went to where they like almost took the green tree or something like that. There's that one. And then there's the one outside of Austin that is it's pretty famous. I feel like Sarah the other day said something about it, but we haven't been. So I was hoping you. Right. Have. There's, all, there's also the Manhattan Reptile Wall that was just uh, recently opened up by Ryan Forkel. For, Forkel. Um, but uh, but yeah, he he messaged me on for a little bit of a graphic design cutting people or cutting an animal out to put it on a white background. Um, and so uh, his stuff looks pretty good. I'm really excited about that. Um, but I mean, I think what we're trying to bring to the table is definitely like, you know, we're trying to bring these super dangerous species, you know, um, that are different parts of the world talk about like this person or, or person, this snake has more, you know, kills more people a year, but it's not the most toxic. Here's why, you know, or, you know, here's the Russell Viper who's in these rice fields. Um, here's the most toxic. Here's the, you know, long, longest venomous, longest fangs, you know, just trying to go through everything and um but yeah so uh, i mean we're trying to bring a lot of that to the table i'm really excited about it uh, working with a lot of these species there's some i might have more of a you know of course i'm a pretty hands-off policy kind of guy but there's some more than others i might um slowly work my way into i don't pretend to you know be steve Irwin and grab this little thing and be like, so here's a boom slang. Don't bite me on the face, you know. Um, what little hooks do you have? That's the second one you've showed us. Oh, I, I, don't, I don't know what this is for. I think this is for my uh, wood burner. That, look, that looks like a snake hook, dude. <laughs> so, I know this is a uh, thermometer earlier and I was super distracted <laughs> trying to figure out what it was. Oh, yeah. Um, is Ryan. Sullivan's still here because I was going to make a joke. I was like, this is what Ryan uses to hold his pecker while he pees. <laughs> yes, he is still here. So hey, I'm waiting <laughs> for him to respond to that. I, I just, I don't want him to think I would say something, say a joke like that behind his back. You know, I want to make sure he knows. I heard he found his pecker after years. Uh, you no, know, someone thing. else found his pecker. Oh, I snap. heard. Yeah, Bob Clark. (laughs) 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 Kind of though, kind of though, because (laughs) of the pillow, the pillow. So Bob Clark did kind of find it because he has a picture of Bob Clark on a pillow that he (laughs) does things on. But thanks. Um, a, A while ago, Carly in the chat asked, "What's the most common snake that your business, um, the company that you work for, gets called out to do?" Um, I would definitely say Western Diamondbacks, um, just because it is Texas. Um, but again, everything is a rattlesnake. So we've had, I know there's a rattlesnake under there gone under there, pulled out a rat snake. Um, uh, you know, so usually, usually it's Western Diamondbacks though. We do go to East Texas a little bit, look for copperheads, but it depends on time of year. Like in the winter time, we do nothing with copperheads. There's nothing we really can do. And we're not going to go out there with a shovel digging up holes, you know, destroying habitat to try and find one or two copperheads. Instead, we wait till their feeding time, work nocturnally, and catch them on a crawl. And it's about being the most effective. So, um, I mean, yeah, you think, like, like everywhere else, it seems like you get calls for giant snakes, venomous snakes, and it's always like a non venomous snake or a small snake. Is that different in West Texas as far as like, I mean, you guys do have a, have a lot of rattlesnakes. Right. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's been really cool. Cause I, I've, uh, I've talked to people overseas, you know, that are in South Africa that do snake relocation. And I was like, Hey, you know, what, what's the biggest challenge, you know, that you find talking with the public and rather than, you know, keeping these snakes alive or killing these snakes, you know, what, rather than that debate, he told me that his biggest debate was the fact that he uses tongs rather than just a snake hook. And he goes, you know, I'm working with arboreal snakes, you know, green mambas, different things like that. And, and, you know, he goes, you know, tongs are necessary with how fast some of these snakes move. And I'm like, that's your debate. That's it. (laughs) You know, (laughs) but, uh, but yeah, no, I mean, it's just the culture here is cookies. Whoa. So, yeah, I mean, the culture is totally different, you know, like, 
But um, give me two seconds. Y'all keep everyone distracted. I'm going to use the restroom real quick and then eat this cookie um, in that order. And then <laughs> I have some cool things to talk about when I come back. So. Okay, Sweet. cool. So I think that, I mean, if people haven't listened to it. I don't know what it sounds like, but we did make a podcast when we went to the Sweetwater Rattlesnake Roundup. And it was rough. Or it was yeah. rough. It was intense. It's, it's hard because you want to make sure that you, you speak against things like that, but also it's like the most draining thing ever. And it's like, yeah, it's hard. I couldn't keep up. I want to keep about talking it. about it, but then I don't at the same time. You know, I don't. It's like, it's so shitty and it seems like something that won't change. So therefore it's like, you want to just give right. up. And I don't want people <laughs> to get terrible. it like annoyed by, you know, the, it's a Debbie Downer for sure. And I don't yeah. want people to get annoyed by it. But at the same time, I'm like, holy shit, that was wild. And, and if, if and just for everyone me, knew about it, and you know. For me, it was wild more than just like the reptile aspect of it. Just from a human just a, perspective. From a human, yeah. From. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of stereotypes coming true in that. Uh, yes in that, and no. I mean, um, of Southern Texas people. Well, there's I mean, lots the, the ones, of stereotypes of those people that I have and other people have across people the with country. Cowboy hats and cowboy boots killing um, animals. It's not. Know. It doesn't I even mean, have to do with the animals. Just the people. I was saying. I'm saying from no, a different standpoint. No, I thought that people were fine. They were nice to us. They were okay. never not okay, nice to us. Okay. 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 I don't think anyone was outright mean to us. I think we got a million looks, and I felt uncomfortable at multiple periods of the day. Um, no, I mean, that may be your perspective. Um, I thought we did just fine. Different perspective, <laughs> really. But then again, you know, I would, I didn't really want to step on any toes. No, so we did a lot more like behind the scenes type, you know, like we weren't ballsy enough. We went so, like. Yeah, undercover, we we weren't ballsy enough to really like talk to people. And that luckily, much. we were able to like we didn't have any type of following, anything going on, so we so could we be somewhat raising, anonymous. Yeah, I think we could go back again, and people wouldn't know. Right, right, yeah. But I mean, that first video in like twenty four hours got like fifty k views or something like that. Oh, it was viral. Mm, it, was, it was viral, but it was like Todd Todd Autry. If you guys don't know, right. Rattlesnake roundups. He did honestly a lot of the answering because we had talked to Todd. We had kind of coordinated with Todd before we went, so he actually did a lot of the heavy lifting because, like, a I wasn't educated enough on the subject to do a lot of the heavy lifting, and then I wasn't educated in the way to deal with people who disagreed with me in a positive, positive way. Positive way. And Todd was just amazing at that. So thanks to Todd. So if anyone right. wants to, you know, like feels the same about us and like, or but and then again, like, like I don't want everyone to go there and give you money. No, but I would say know, just reach out to Todd. Money, I would say reach out to Todd. No, I would say if go, you go join, join the Rise Against Rattlesnake Roundup group on Facebook or support, you know, Kentucky Reptiles who support people who um, – or these so, guys. shameless plug, you know, kind of like Ryan likes. Um, but uh, a shameless plug is going to be facebook.com slash big country snakes, and that's going to be the big country snake removal page. Um, he posts a lot more regular videos and photos, um, and you'll see kind of everything we do. Sweet, can you explain real quick? I realize for people who um don't live in Texas what the JCs are because I didn't know till we moved to yeah, Texas. Yeah, so the JCs never heard are like a a clan of people who don't put say out clan. Me. <laughs> don't use the word clan. Okay, who put don't on? Don't use the word clan. <laughs> they put on basically. It's an organization that puts on the roundups. I don't know if there's a more formal. I mean, there's a more formal definition. I don't know if Max, you can define that more because I mean, it doesn't um, have to do with just rattlesnake roundups. Normally, normally, since a lot of them are bigger, I say, "Mom and Dad, this is JC. JC, this is my mom and dad." <laughs> Wait, what? I missed that. Mom you know the song. <laughs> so as far as the but like <laughs> Damn it, I missed the I joke. There? I missed the joke. It, it's a song from the Bloodhound Gang. It, it's like Mom and Dad, this is JC. JC, this is my mom and dad. Now show them them cities. <laughs> Wow, great, cool. Yeah, no, it's, but um, 
let me answer Ryan real quick. So well, he, uh, um, yeah, I you do that. Pooping, but, but an unspoken thing about vegans is our poops are so quick. Like seriously, like I don't even pull out my phone anymore. I'm just like, does it come out in, like rabbit shaped pellets or nah? No, no, no. It's it's just smooth. It go. It just goes right on out. You're done. Like, like wow. people who are red faced, like in the stall for like 20 minutes. I'm like, what are you doing with your life? It's that five, man. Wow. Wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Ryan knows it. <laughs> Ryan knows yeah, what Ryan I'm called getting. it immediately. I don't know what the Bloodhound Gang is, but okay. But do you know what the what the JCs are like beyond beyond the Roundup as an organization in general? <laughs> no, I think it's like a men's Boy Scout group who likes to drink and drink cheap, like really cheap, like Natty Light cheap, <laughs> and kill things. Mm -hmm. Are they vegan too, or no? <laughs> Are they vegan too? Um, no. What assholes! So what? <laughs> what? What made you go vegan? By the way, I'm sure you've been asked I mean, that ten sure, million yeah. times, and I apologize. And people like to fuck with you about it, so I mean, I'm not. I'm sorry. That, but. No, no, no. So, uh, like, it, like that's an interesting question, and I love t talking about it rather than typing it because I'm not a Facebook warrior or whatever. So basically, <clears throat> I'm a big documentary fiend, and I live uh, with some good friends of mine, Tanner. Um, like <clears throat> Tanner was probably the biggest influence. He sat me down. He's like, Hey, you know, he's like, first of all, think everything you've been taught is kind of just tradition. I was like, okay, I, I can see that. Um, and so, and so basically it boiled down to the fact that I live in a first world country and I've got countless options. Um, and so it boils down to something doesn't have to die for me to eat. Then yeah, I'm all about it. Um, there's environmental reasons, uh, which it's just like the amount of water and amount, amount of land we use. Um, it takes so much to, you know, make the meat, um, like 75% of what we grow on this planet is fed to animals and then they're fed to people. So not only is it grown in third world countries, a lot of the time where there's literally people there starving, but they, they grow this food and then they feed it to animals that are shipped to Western countries and then we eat it while those people sit there starving. Um, same with the water usage. And so it's one of the, like, there's those reasons, health reasons. There's, uh, you know, for me, the cruelty aspect. You know, I don't feed my dogs, cats, or snakes vegan diets. Um, and a big one for environmental, you know, if, if you have a lot of reptile keepers on here, um, you look at Europlatus, um, mossy leaf tails, you know, satanic leaf tails. They, uh, they live in Madagascar, and Madagascar <coughs> excuse me, is losing tons of species to animal agriculture and deforestation. So it's about an acre a second that we lose, and uh, most of that's, like, the majority of that is because of animal agriculture. So for me, I was like, I love animals, you know, and it's like, of course, you know, like, your tongue doesn't have meat or fat receptors, so everything you taste is texture and seasoning, so... I can replicate it, you know, um, and that, that was my, that was my it's like me. Yeah. Everyone. Don't tell that to Melissa. She's. Everyone thinks, rigid. everyone thinks that tofu is our meat substitute and it's not tofu is tofu, you know, like you can do good tofu. You can do really bad tofu, but there's, um, there's Satan. No, not Satan. Uh, he lives. Satan, yeah. I know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> Oh, that was bad. I had cookie in my throat. Um, <laughs> Satan, that's a good uh, But yeah, it's S-E-I-T-A-N. That is honestly the best meat substitute. You can do so much with it. Um, what is it made out of? It's like a wheat gluten. The um, salt the dead. <laughs> so. Wow. I'm actually level 5 vegan. I don't eat anything that casts a shadow. <laughs> Excuse no, me? Simpsons. Okay. Damn it. I keep missing all these references. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't get that reference. It's just uh -oh. a silly thing to say. Uh -oh. I uh -oh. thought he was serious. There's so much. But do you, do you feel that it's odd that, I mean, as the reptile community, 
there's not too many as far as breeders and keepers who would say draw a hard line as far as like vegan or conservation or anything like that. I mean, I, like, I don't like, I, I try not to write people off, you know, like that, you know, you know, even Ryan who loves his chili and different things like that. It's like, we all have kind of a line we draw for ourselves. And again, it's, it's just kind of about education, you know, uh, when, like when you're learning about the stuff and you're like, okay, well, you know, ultimately people want to help animals, you know, and like, and it's just kind of this, you know, you can definitely do veganism wrong. If you try and live on Taco Bell and Oreos your whole life, you're going to feel like shit. You're going to look like shit. But, you know, like th this idea, you know, like it's just about discovery and education that, Hey, I, I can do this. And, you know, um, I weigh 170 pounds and, people are like how long have you been vegan and um it, it's just like you can definitely make it work but the hard part about it is culturally you know uh like if you go to cracker barrel you're not gonna find vegan options you know? <laughs> cracker barrel's not meant for vegan but, so a lot of that is like you know definitely in general Minnesota with my girlfriend um when i went to vegas you know there, there was a lot of places with different options so you know, they're, uh, I got people messaging me on Facebook, but, uh, but, you know, definitely here in Texas, it's a lot harder, but you, you learn and like you, you like you, you get everything set up and, you know, you, you get your methods. Taco Bell, honestly, is a mecca of, for vegans. Like if I want something cheap, fast, don't care about what it is, I go there, get beefy Fritos, burritos, sub the beef for beans and fresco style. And that takes the dairy off and that's pico. And I mean that's my that's my bread and butter. So, <laughs> I had to think about that for a second. I'm like, wait, I don't trust what's in Taco Bell. Everything, but buy some beef fat in there, or something for you. I feel like there's something mixed in those beans. But I also love Taco Bell, so I can't say anything. Also, there's like nothing real in it, so I'm sure. Sure, it's yeah. So it's all it's all fake. <laughs> there's. I think that's where like it gets tricky as far as diet goes because obviously you don't want to give in to factory farming. And then at the same time, you don't want to rely on junk foods. And at the same time, some of the foods that you may eat may also have palm oil in them. And then obviously that's a contributing factor as far as... Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's like, fuck, man. What the fuck do I eat? So, yeah, and, I mean, that's definitely difficult. You know, I, I still eat palm oil. I try and avoid it the best I can. Um, but it's, like, it, it's got to be up to the masses, you know. It, it's got to be a huge group thing because it's supply and demand, you know. And uh, Tyson, Tyson's one of the big four as far as chicken farming goes. They're, like, one of the most cruel, and they just released a vegan alternative. And it's like, that, yeah, uh, I mean, like T Tyson has m some of the most cruelest practices. Oh, yeah, most they were in that documentary that I was forced to watch 17 times in high school. Oh, I hated that one. Was it one by the guy with oh, some Ben and oh, Jerry's? No, was it Food Inc? I yeah, it was like yeah, Food yeah. Inc. Oh. oh, Food Inc, yeah. Oh. So, I like how you I mean, view it as an annoyance, not like you were enlightened at all. I mean, I'm not an idiot. I know it's terrible. If you really think that, like, freaking the process of meat to my table is rainbows and butterflies, you're an idiot. Straight up. I just choose to ignore just, it. Just ignore it. I just choose to 100%. I fully accept. Also, if I was a vegan, I'd die tomorrow. So. No, you just eat shit. I my vegan superpowers are pretty cool. Oh, yeah? What are your vegan superpowers? Um, I've, I've got a couple of them. Um, let me try and think of one. I think to I'm, be I'm actually, man, I gotta think of one. You have to like uh, vegetables, and so that just counts me out immediately. I need everyone in the chat to to raise their hands up and give me their powers. I'm gonna make a spirit bomb. <laughs> Oh, I was editing this podcast the other day with some like crazy guru self-help person. And they said that when you are positive, you give off like these positive ions that in turn will basically cool down the earth and solve global warming. Um, huh. so, yeah, that's what I do on my free time. <laughs> well, not free not time. Not in free time. <laughs> well, I mean, one of the things I do is I learn to make things levitate, you know. What? <laughs> 
so dumb. It's a string. <laughs> I think we got it. Yeah. <laughs> I think we got it. Enough. <laughs> yeah, it's probably magic. But I, I think it's just weird that, I mean, obviously we're all disconnected to our food in a certain way, but I mean, what do you think about, I mean, there's companies that are making basically factory beef, like not factory beef, but like a Petri dish beef, essentially. Would you eat something that's basically like a... Reptilink for humans. <laughs> no, but it's like made from a Petri dish. You know, it's, it's beef, but it's made from a Petri dish per se. I mean, Right, it's lab grown meat. Um, I've considered it. I'm not sure if I would. And kind of my like, kind of my mindset behind that is just kind of like my health, you know, like just jumping right back into something like that. But that and like I've already gotten my methods. Like I can already eat, like and thrive. You know, it's it's veganism. Yeah, at first I was cutting a lot out. But then I learned about a lot, you know, like you learn about recipes you didn't even know and like didn't even consider you start working with new ingredients. And I've got all of that now. And, you know, everyone thinks it's just lettuce or just, you know, like tofu and, you know, boring and bland. It's like that was my challenge to me is, you know, it's like, you know, it's like even if somebody doesn't go fully vegan, you can make amazing vegetable dishes. And to be honest, I cut out dairy before I cut out meat because dairy is disgusting. Like, and you see? Like, on a personal like, level? Like, on a just, personal just, like, level, it's just like <laughs> a part of my soul because dairy is a um, part of my soul. So dairy has what's called stomatic cells in it. Um, stomatic cells can be found in whiteheads on somebody's face. Or the blisters on cow's udders from over milking. Mm -hmm. and? and then, um, and then they also the industry has what's called a rape rack, which is this giant circle. They put put a bunch of cows around, they fist them, and then they stick something kind of like this, but straight up there, and they inseminate them after they jag off a bull. Sir, sir, what does fisting mean? <laughs> um, it's worth. <laughs> okay, wait, but I still. It's not a noun. It's a verb. <laughs> but yeah no i mean then it's so like dairy is so easily easy to replicate you have cashew milk um cashew milk, milk rice milk, 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 milk flax milk uh, almond milk uh what's the other one wait but isn't that still from the oat earth milk, oat milk oh my God. isn't almond milk still from don't don't be no, about but it's not from dairy it. What? But I thought you they think don't... he doesn't eat anything from the earth? Okay, that's a dumb question. What the from fuck? animals, from animals, from animals, from animals. Yes, and Ahmed isn't an animal. Shut up. Uh, that was a, not... Let's retract that statement. I one time my roommate asked us about vegan potatoes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody goes, we were making fries. And they come in and they go, are they vegan potatoes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, I, people have brain farts. Took me a second. Okay. So that makes sense. Yeah, people use coconut milk. I'm also and all lactose those intolerant, so you're. you're but you can't replicate field, the cheese. You can't replicate either. cheese, can you? Yes, you can. How? Uh, there's there's a couple different brands. Daya is the main one. So delicious makes a couple. Um, honestly, I'm not a big fan all of the Daya ones. My biggest my biggest recommendation is learn to make your own. Like those are my favorite cheeses. Like. Coconut milk. Um, those. <laughs> <I'm not laughs> like honestly, those are my favorite ones. Like, and it, it's not as hard as everyone you know makes. It, like, you can look anything up on YouTube nowadays. Huh? Oh yeah. So, um, but yeah, no, I mean, like, there, there's um, my girlfriend's got all her side notes, but she won't come on camera. Hi. So. it's not scary mm -hmm. so it's not like fisting cows <laughs> it's, not. it's exactly like fisting cows <laughs> being here so there, there's a woman uh if you google dairy is fucking scary like or dairy industry in five minutes it'll be your top result it's a five minute video and this woman just explains everything i saw it and i was like oh and then like i'm not one to watch a video like that and then just like you know, take it for everything. I looked, you know, I did research on it and I was like, okay, this sucks. <laughs> so, 
That's so does Taco Bell, man. Watch a documentary on Taco Bell. It is okay, terrible. listen. <laughs> <laughs> Taco Bell is fully acknowledged to be terrible, yet we all still eat it. <laughs> okay, there's two there's two, two kinds of vegans. There's um, you know, hey, is that vegan? It's literally made of chemicals. <laughs> yeah, but are they vegan chemicals? <laughs> <laughs> you can tell which one I am in these cookies. Gotcha. Okay, so snakes. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> Yeah, snakes, so. Motherfucking liberals talking about them damn vegan. <laughs> vegan. <Stop running. laughs> so snakes. Okay, snakes. Uh, <laughs> so obviously we went over venomous stuff, but I feel like that's a small part of at least what I know that you keep in your home. So Ooh. what? So um, I thought it was interesting when you in the beginning described yourself, you said that you sell or you breed pet animals. I thought that was I interesting. I that a little bit, though. So, oh. yeah, I said pet and kind of breeder quality because, you know, you can definitely, you know, uh, but mainly that's kind of just a blanket statement. You know, ball pythons. Uh, I have some rat snakes, hognose. Um, what do I keep? Boas, carpet pythons. Um, somebody yesterday just gave me a an adult female albino reticulated python. Um, Whoa. Like, oh, just okay. gave it to so, you. I, uh, huh? Just gave it to you. Yeah, so I just, I was like, okay, well, um, I guess this is a thing I have now. And, um, but no, they, they were Air Force and they, they were leaving. So I was like, hey, I'd be happy to take it on. I got a buddy who would love to, you know, produce some, you know, some stuff on a smaller level. Um, and then, yeah, so uh, it, it, it's, it's been a good time. Uh, I'm trying to think of other species I might have. Of course, crested geckos, gargoyle geckos. Um, I don't breed my bearded dragon. I don't breed my skink. Um, I, I'm very cautious about breeding lizards just because they're so mean to each other when they breed. And I, I, I want to make sure if I get into that, that I have the time for it. And mm -hmm. Focus. Um, because everything I do, I'd like to try and do it right as best as possible. And, um, and yeah, so. What did I miss? We were talking about um, other animals. He keeps, oh, the breeding thing. And he was saying he doesn't breed his skink and he's a little cautious to breed lizards and everything because it's just more time and more effort to do all that. Yeah. So, I mean, there might be some venomous stuff in the future. Um, but again, it's just the bureaucracy of it. I'm taking my time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's something that, I mean, there's not even many. As far as venomous, it's not like there's a market to sell it that much. I mean, there's snakes that can kill you, and they sell for like a hundred bucks. It's kind yeah. of weird. It's a very weird market. Yeah, it, it definitely is weird. You know, like I was asking um, one of my friends the other day. I was like, "Hey, how does it feel that I have a ball python that's worth more than a lot of your venomous stuff?" And he goes, "Man, it's stupid." <laughs> <laughs> In a sense, it is because I wish yeah. that there was a, a larger barrier. Because I mean, I want people, the right people, the opportunity to uh, obviously keep venomous and breed venomous and do all the things that you people like to do. That's right. I said you mean you people, you you venomous people. But <laughs> but yeah, and it's like, but you want it to be, have a little bit of a barrier so that you know that the person's responsible. So it'd be nice yeah. if a Gaboon, Gaboon Viper was at least like 500 bucks. I think that'd be cool. But who am I? Right. There'll be one, one ten at Hamburg this weekend. So, uh, Is Abilene your place for life? Doubt it. Um, no, I, I don't think so. Um, Abilene's really good because it has a low cost of living. Um, so I can save a little more money and travel uh, a little bit more. Um, it definitely has its downfalls. That's why I'm right outside of Abilene. Just because I like Abilene, it's all right. I just don't like Are Abilene. you more west or more east? Um, let's see. I, uh, more south. Oh, okay. Neither. Yeah. You were wrong twice. <laughs> <laughs> Are you north, south, east, or west? <laughs> That's how I should have asked, I guess. East. I thought you said west. <laughs> Gotcha. So you're a little bit out. 
Yeah. So, I mean, just, just enough to not base their ordinances with, you know, bigger snakes or venomous snakes or whatever. Um, but. So where would you move to? Um, I don't know. Let me consult my conscience. Hey, babe, where are we going to move to? Everywhere. Okay, well, there's more vegan restaurants pretty much anywhere other than outside of Emily. So, <laughs> probably Austin would be a good choice, or any Austin's other. Cost living in Austin's problems, like uh, oh yeah, yeah, we're not moving up. So, <laughs> well, there's nowhere that's cheap and has vegan restaurants. It's kind of like <laughs> a scam. The, the the cheaper it is, the less vegan restaurants. The more expensive, the more vegan restaurants. It's a real catch twenty two. Right. I, for a second, I thought you said Delaware, and I was like, I've been through Delaware once, and it was the worst experience of my it's life. It's the worst. Yeah, Delaware is 100% the worst. The speed limit of the whole state is like 50 miles an hour, <laughs> and here it's like, you know, you can go 80. And I'm like, what, do they want me to just, like, stop somewhere? It's so it's small like, that they want you to take your time so that you may, you know, stop at a grocery store or something on your way. Right. You know? No. <laughs> Texas is like, get somewhere, get there fast. Hell, you could. <laughs> oh my god, I miss Texas speed limits so much. I don't miss. I used to go Dallas to Abilene every month. I don't miss doing that at all. Why were you ever? I the darn military. I was at Dias Air Force Base. Are we? Are we just gonna? Are we just gonna go? This? Gonna go? Have we had this conversation that you were at yes, Dias? you definitely have had this well, conversation I, before. I was at Dias, but every time I'm there, it's like I I left there at like 3 in the morning. And then... No, you left Dallas at 3 to get there for 6. Yeah, and then I would train until whenever. And then I would leave train. at like 8 in the middle of the night. Yeah, I'd sit in a fuck train. Because <laughs> the military... But, but basically, it would be like by the time I was done... I didn't want to see anyone. So it was like, <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, I know Max lives in Abilene, but well, I want to get the hell out of here. But I need to sleep here. or get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> so it never works out. And the army isn't, it's a fickle bitch, you know, as yeah. they say. Especially in Abilene, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> but I did try to find something reptile related. I've never really found anything out there. Um, all a dais, you know, I kind of, I used to go for runs and stuff and I never saw anything. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like, that's one of the things I like about Abilene is you can be in a, as involved as, um, hold on. We told you not to get on the chat, Max. Yeah. Um, so, uh, um, or, See? Yeah, Abilene is as involved as you want to be. Like, with, with Dallas, it's like, man, I want to go to Taco Bell. Let's drive half an hour, you know, here, everything, you know, you can go five minutes, you're wherever you need to be, you know, 15 minutes across, everything is, you know, so condensed, like Dallas is like, let's drive an hour and a half to go still to be in place. Dallas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so tell us about your primetime herping spots. Primetime herping. So latitude 31 point. <laughs> <laughs> No, and mile marker. Yeah, I, I love to go to Arizona as often as possible. Uh, this this past year has been really weird because we it's gone kind of straight from winter to summer to winter again, and you haven't really had a spring or a fall. So the herping season here has sucked, and in, in Arizona has sucked. And um, but I love to go to Arizona. Yavapai County is one of my favorites. Um, uh, Trans Pecos. There's a lot of really good species there. Um, as far as numbers go. Um, I mean, like if I'm just trying to get out and go herping, you know, I'll usually go just north or just south or just east or just west of town. Um, see what I did there? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. thanks, and thanks. Then, you know, I'll, I'll usually go just a little ways out and just kind of cruise some of the dirt roads. And, you know, I do a lot of pattern surveys. So, um, that way, if we end up finding a den site, we want to know its population, you know, uh, are they starving? Are you know, like, because there's too many, um, are they growing, you know, uh, there's a lot of snakes that, you know, we can find year after year, so. So your, your herping interests usually revolve around rattlesnakes in one way or another? Um, a lot of them, yeah. Um, uh, it's just, 
Um, Grey Bandit, King Snakes, Alterna. Those are really cool to me. Have you found any in West Texas? Uh, uh, no, not here. Uh, they're all in the Trans Pecos. Oh yeah, that's 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 more West Texas. Yes, yes, and well, Texas. That, that's what I call West Texas. At least so. we call anything West Texas. Well, like where you are, people don't realize that that's like Central Texas, but we call it West. We Texas. call it West Texas. Right. So when everyone asks where Abilene is, I'm like, it's the buckle of the Bible Belt. You know, it's. It is like the Jesus town of Texas. Like everyone knows it to be. So. Yeah. So. But I didn't so realize the rest of, of the snakes world, snakes. a lot of people know about Abilene because the college there. I didn't know that it's like a thing people knew Abilene about. Christian, so yeah. here's the only reason people go to ACU. Like, well, it's not the only reason. Oh, the, she has something to say. It's not the only reason, but it's a huge reason with a lot of people. They went to Christian colleges. They Googled it. It was the first on the list, and they go, I'm going there. <laughs> yes! And that is literally they have a good idea. Yes! <laughs> California, there's been people from, like, like Maryland yeah, who just have come here just for that reason, just because it was the first one on the list. Wow. Imagine moving from California to Abilene, Texas. I mean, they might be in a small there's town. There's a Hooters but... there. I mean, it came with, with a lot of – Hims and Haas, but I mean, they got a Hooters, so it is pretty hot. Uh, Jesus I mean, would not have a girlfriend. She came from Indiana after she moved up there. <laughs> she should just come on. Come on. You... <laughs> they can hear you, babe. <laughs> I just, can't really hear. Oh yeah, she cut out. But just come on, tell us about Indiana. They said they don't believe you unless you come on. <laughs> She's doing her homework, but uh, that could be weird. Hey, for any of the girls in the uh, in the chat, just so y'all know, she has both the alien palette and the blood sugar palette from Jeffrey Star. <laughs> <laughs> don't know what that means, but it sounds pretty serious. I know what it means. <laughs> I know what it means. Eyeshadow is very intense lately. Jeffree Star is pretty intense. It's so eyeshadow. I can when you think, whenever you hear palette, think of eyeshadow. I thought we were highlighting. I thought that's what that. Oh, meant. how did you know I'm highlighting? Oh, the palmetto and palette. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would have to say though, there's actually only pretty much ever one girl in the chat, and she's awesome, but. <laughs> the girl representation is very. That's loud. the reptile hobby, I guess. In general, I mean, honestly, my, my like my analytics, yeah, I'm very male biased. Um, as far as uh, who is watches my stuff, um, and I, 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 I don't know. Like, I'm not sure if that's good or bad for me. Um, just because mm. you, you get some of those girl YouTubers, and um, I think we fall into similar camps to where like my my analytics I mean I'm 70 to 75 percent male but I think it's because like we don't do like very we don't play to a younger audience we don't play to but I'm I don't a know, girl it's hard I thought just me being a girl would help would a, a girl. <laughs> I guess I'm not the right type of girl no but like <laughs> a lot of the videos alone or like Max does a lot of the videos alone so I feel like and we come from a perspective I guess we can't help but to be male. So I guess right. and in general are male. I don't think you're, I feel like a lot of young girls. I don't think are you do it, anything but. to purposely appeal to male. You know, I don't think you're just like male ions, <laughs> but it just kind of happens. <laughs> are you are you sending out male ions in your videos? No, no, but I mean like we don't like younger girls, I feel like the the generation coming up is much more is much closer to 50-50 than what the older group is. And my demographics go is the from, older like, group. usually I from... I all my testosterone out of my beard and I rub it out like dandruff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, that's an issue. You just ooze testosterone and manlyhood, and females just usually can't handle that. It's all that Satan. What's wrong with blood? I don't know what happened. Well, it's because you left the box of wet food on Matt. <laughs> I love having couples on, even though she's not really she's on. Not on. She's half on. <laughs> 
So she might live stream my, I'm doing stand up comedy tonight, tomorrow night. I'm actually <clears throat> headlining a show in Abilene. And, so uh, you really do have your hands in a ridiculous amount of jars, Max. Like, come on. Yeah. So I, I don't understand, you know, people who know it, they know like, Hey, he can't always reply at a bucks notice, but you know, uh, some people are like, why haven't, why haven't you responded? Why haven't you responded? I'm like, bitch, I'm busy. <laughs> I'm busy making jokes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm writing. Get out of here. So uh, I will highlight one of the jokes I'm telling tomorrow and I, I was, uh, I was in Best Buy with my girlfriend. She was up getting an up, she was due for an upgrade on her phone. And this woman walks up with a cane and she has a marijuana shirt on. This woman's like 85. And she walks up and she's like, I was like, ha nice shirt. And she was talking to the, you know, whatever. And so I decided to like, you know, tell her a nice shirt. And she was like, oh, cool. She pulled out a pamphlet and apparently it works has gotten into the CBD game, the like marijuana game. Oh, and like, so now there's a hemp works. And I was like, there's a multi-level marketing scheme for freaking. It even uh, got the heads in it. it now. It works. It is after, crazy. After she's sitting there with this cane, like talking to us, she leaves and she forgets her cane. And I was <laughs> like, okay, so either one, this stuff actually works, or two, <laughs> this woman walks around with a cane all day until somebody asks her about her shirt so she can forget it as a marketing, like. No, I miss the days when they would just have somebody call in the middle of, you know, your meeting and go, hey, I've got five Porsches, you know. No, it works is like insane. That is, I mean, can we tell everyone like, and, and I feel like I've told people straight up like, hey, guys, this is a pyramid scheme. And they'll be like, no, you don't understand. Like, I have a mentor who, like, makes $50,000 It is a pyramid scheme, but if you're making money off of it, why not be like in it? They make, like, $50,000 a year. Why not be in it if you're making money? But not I'm everyone. Not, no one is. Gaming my family and friends and, you know, pushing this on them. Right. They're making Making money off of it. She oh, got. She gets suckered into this shit. I She's just, like, I she could join a cult in about five minutes. That's all it takes. I mean, she the house would, we always ride outside, of, ride outside of Abilene. That's what. Yeah, like to be on. Well, a my West friend Texas was in it, and I, she's she knows how I don't get any sleep, and she was talking about that like little caffeine drink thing. I don't know. And I did it for a little bit, but then you have to do it for like three months to get the deal. Oh, they were coming every month. It is. <laughs> there was just energy drinks out the asshole. They were it is coming a, in all over. but like, I don't know because everyone who I've ever seen who does it posts like, "Oh, I'm making this much money this month," and we get to fly to this. Yeah, that's place. that's how that's how pyramid schemes work. You so, act like you're so, rich. It's a lie. So here's here's what you do: you go to the Better Business Bureau, and then you go to the Department of uh, Labor, and 95% of their employees don't make minimum wage. What? <laughs> yeah. I guess the people I'm friends with on Facebook are in oh, that yeah, file. No, it's all a lie. Like, there, there's a whole subreddit called, like, anti-MLM. And it's, like, somebody, like, posted, hey, I bought all these groceries with this card. And, like, in the card, like, they're covering their card number. But it's, like, it shows the first four, and it shows the first four on the receipt. And it goes... That one was paid with a Visa. This one is a MasterCard. Why would you even lie? Oh, my God. So, I mean, I, I'm like, you know, yeah. If your business is making more off of, like, people joining than the actual product it's selling. But, and I love it when I'm, like, in Starbucks or something and people are like, hey, you want to be an entrepreneur? <laughs> that like, happens, yes. It's always at a coffee shop. <laughs> It's always at a coffee shop. You're on your computer being innocent, and some fucking dude in a suit will come up and act like he has fucking money. Hey, bitch, want to sell insurance? No. <laughs> like, what? But it's like, I'm, I don't know, I'm surrounded by this because I, I edit podcasts. But also, podcasts. snakes are pyramid screen, schemes, so That's y'all can't talk. Ball python, I mean, uh, don't you're, let the cat uh, out uh, the uh, bag. You're part of I the pyramid I sell more screen. products than I sell employees. So, but you are selling to someone in the hopes that they raise it up and breed it. So it is somewhat similar. I don't hope that because then they're competition later. If like, here's the thing. 
I don't wish for it, but if they do it, I'm going to encourage them every step of the way. You know. I think what's, what's weird is that you're pr- kind of your whole business depends on them getting out of it within like three to five. Well, I mean, for us and probably for you too, so a lot nice. of it is uh, is mostly like the pet market. I mean, for us, it's mostly pets. But when you're right. in the when you're in the breeding thing, you're basically just selling off the genes and then they'll breed it in three years and then they'll sell it or whatever. And I don't, yeah. I don't know what I have to say. About <laughs> I don't know. I'm not anti it. I just, uh, not anti what? I think it's just more fun selling pets for us. It works so, for us better. But if you look at the number of, um, if you look at the number of people who were involved um, in like, pets like the number of people like purchasing pets and the amount of money is going up linearly uh above the cost of you know of course um uh every year of like the people born and the people spending money in the labor force and above the cost of these uh consumer price index so that means it's a growing market and so as more people because everyone who has dogs and cats can also get snakes Again, it's a matter of education. There's a ton of untapped market, you know, so. Um, yeah, which I think is uh, something that we depend on in a sense, because we're sitting there at a reptile show like, I swear snakes are awesome. This is a corn snake, you know, hold it, everything like that. Right. You know, that's why that's why ball pythons will always have their place because that's what sucks. Size. They're so chill. Yeah, just... because of the mix of their size, temperament. And then you get into more niche markets, you know, um, you can buy, you know, you can buy geckos from different people, you know, you can buy um, giant reed ticks and berms from Ryan Sullivan. Um, if you want to buy a piece you of garbage. You plugged Ryan so much, you much this episode. Let's just acknowledge that. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. What'd you say? I said we have plugged Ryan so much this episode. We got to acknowledge that. <laughs> We just all love him. Yeah, he's cool. He's still watching. <laughs> I saw him share his uh his uh Facebook video. Oh, I haven't seen it. Um it's about the uh super dwarfs. Dude, did, did you edit that or did he? Uh the uh, the one so, where it's like Um so I've I've been talking with him about doing some video editing. He has somebody who comes over records on a phone um and they kind of record in bulk and then they release segments. Um, I've got my dual cams. I've got my, that's one of the lights on my lighting setup. And so, um, it's just a matter of going to Elmo. Um, yeah, that's a, <laughs> it, that's a, that's a task. That's yeah. a task. So, so, I mean, we still want to do it. It's a matter, it's like, for me, like the big thing is time. So when I go there, I'm going to try and tackle a couple different things. I'm doing a video for pet snake snacks. Um, so I, I, I try and multitask in that way, you know, I don't have to worry about the cost on um, uh, like th- those two are already named. Um, I'm going to. Dude, that. Uh... OK, so somebody tried calling me on. I don't know, whatever. That... Ryan's Ryan's first video. I don't know if it was his first video, but. The one where he was, oh god, what was he saying with the tinfoil hat? And he was like, "Shut the fuck up" or something like that. But the the editing, it was zooming in and it was giving him this deep voice, and the dude, it was just fucking killing me. It was the funniest thing I've ever seen. Get your shit together. Yeah, that's what it was. Get your shit together. And he's wearing a, like a tinfoil hat. And, yeah. I'm <laughs> and he's dramatically zooming in. And it's fucking hilarious. You know, it's funny. I want to, like, tell people, like, hey, if you want to watch this video that we're talking about, go to his Facebook page. Except I don't know which of the ten Facebook pages that this video is posted on because Ryan has ten. Send him to his YouTube channel. So, um. All right. Go go to Ryan the Ivory one. Is that his? Well, that's the one he's commenting on here. So I don't know if... Again, I don't know. This is what happens when <laughs> you have no filter and you get banned on a lot of Facebook accounts. And so you got to have 10. Wow, we we love you. I, I am not. I am not. I am not. I'm just telling you Ryan is the person. Like I'm going to change Ryan, but I'm going to make him a little advertiser friendly 
just for the fact you'll get them in recommended, and you know the algorithm. Joe. Yeah, uh, yeah. Joe's not or Ryan's not friendly to any algorithms. <laughs> so another thing I really want to show off. Uh, let's see, I gotta go back. I want to do a couple of different effects. Uh, it didn't your like the effect effects. Just dropped us off. Oh, that? Sorry. That's I'm a Gucci at... King Snake bag. I'm looking at a. There's all. Oh, a Chikar demon. Was... Is that Satan? I think that's Satan. Oh. That's Satan. You have Satan in your it's house. A big loaf of Satan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, I've got to convince my brother that I am actually in a stream and to stop calling me. So, so Ryan the Ivory one isn't. It's just the one he's commenting That's on. His, personal his actual one, one is the Ivory so, connection. Anyway, this is uh, one of the effects I want to do for one of his videos. It's just, you know, those yes. little glitches. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Please make so, him. I mean, there, there's there's tons of different things I want to do for his videos, and um, tons of stuff I've been playing with. Oh, sorry. Now I'm watching a stream where I'm just like. Moving it everywhere. Yeah, it's weird to watch yourself. We just scroll it down so we can't see ourselves. It's it's, it's weird. I have it in the peripheral, so like the chat, I can. That's um, almost more distracting in a way. To have it on the side. So, um, I don't know. I get used to it because I usually work here, have something going here, so I'm like, oh. Um. So I was wondering what. And just so I can guide the, the conversation to uh, Snake slash YouTube. But what are kind of your hopes, plans on the future of, say, YouTube? Um, I would love to travel more. Um, so definitely definitely talk more of the Venom stuff. So I'm ex excited to talk to Crowfab, Spencer Green. I would love to go, excuse me, to the Kentucky Reptile Zoo. Um, we want to go there, too. Um, uh, let's see, let me get this straighter. There we go. Um, so yeah, definitely traveling more. Um, I've got family over in England. Um, I'm, uh, I'm trying to go see again. Um, and, and there's some cool stuff over in Europe I'd like to see again. Uh, just with having family over there, their, their time's kind of limited, uh, just being 82 and 83, as far as my grandparents are concerned. So that that's definitely primary. Um, there's also the uh, uh, oh, I forget the name of his business. Um, Texel, uh, Texoma Reptiles. Um, he uh, David he goes and he takes photos of bears in Alaska. I would love to take photos mm -hmm. of bears in Alaska. Um, so he really turned me on to that idea. So. I would like to do a little more traveling. I would like to dive deeper into different things. Uh, one of the things I'm going to work on right now, what, and it's something I've avoided doing, but making a reptile tank setup or a reptile, like, like how you just, you get your snack and, you know, how should you set it up? It's such a generic video, but I just need a reference for when I sell a snake, I can go, hey, go watch this video, you know, um, and so more to help other people out than myself, and I can address what I do and why. Um, I'm trying to dive a little bit deeper, definitely up the quality and a lot of different things, spend a little more time on it. Um, right now, I'm comparing Reptichip to Pro Coco to Coco Block and to, of course, uh, Reptibark because everyone mistakes it and goes to Petco and buys it. <clears throat> so I'm comparing all of those, talking about pH levels and ab absorption, different things like that. So, um, I mean, there's so much. And... Uh, you could ask me again in a month or two, and my answer might totally change. So, like, it's so open ended, and I, I really like that. Um, definitely need to uh, head up to where you guys are at and see what what y'all have to offer. So, yeah, let's. I mean, we should. I don't know if you road trip, but we should figure out a way to go to the reptile, the Kentucky <laughs> Reptile Zoo. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know, know if you road, road trip. trip. Yeah, that's not like the what the thing fuck does said. that mean? I don't know if you uh, I mean, ride like, in a vehicle. I don't know if you road trip, but I mean, if you road trip, I mean, we can road trip. Together. We can all get together and go. If like you want to road trip, like you don't have to road, road trip. trip. But <laughs> oh, we put it. On. <laughs> but it, <laughs> I was in a punk band. I mean, I, I've seen 
sort of the central part of the U.S. <laughs> I've seen a lot of the U.S. <laughs> I was in a punk. Country. You know, the central part of Texas, you know. I, no, we were, that's the U.S. No, I made sure to get out of Texas because it was the middle of summer. I was in a minivan with a cu- couple other dudes, and there was no A.C. The windows were down. I'm waiting for that. Otherwise, you know, it was awful. So I got as far north as I could. <laughs> So yeah, going to Kentucky shouldn't be a big deal. Yeah, yeah, so Kentucky. I was just talking to our friend Ryan Cox about how far he lives from the reptile zoo. I definitely want to go there. Yeah. And I just feel like if I, this never mind. It's oh, gonna God. sound creepy. <laughs> but I, now I, I gotta I, say it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> no, that means you literally have to say it right now. I feel like if I like <laughs> Rob Jen Harrison, I'll have, oh my, what? I'll have nine lives like him because he's had nine lives. And as I long feel as like you rub him off. <laughs> if I rub his shoulder, because he should, <sighs> he should a hundred percent de- be dead. So I feel like if I just like get some of his juju, I'll live a long life. Ew, juju I feel like this is gonna slowly morph into becoming a little more creepy and a little more. Creepy. As long as his juju <laughs> hits me right in the face, right? You're, oh, you're just gonna good. show up and be like, Jim Harrison, can I lick your hands? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I walked just right into mouth. that. Okay, well, you guys know what I mean. Right. No, so this, not this exactly. Why we you have more male viewers than female. because. <laughs> <laughs> Except our one female viewer is, like, on the same level with that stuff. So it's okay. Um, but, okay, Jim Harrison, if you uh, – shameless plug of ourselves. If you haven't listened to our podcast <laughs> with Jim and Kristen, he details the many times he should have died in his life. And so clearly there is some luck running through his blood, and I just want a piece of it. Well, so I, just I don't think things. Jim will come on this podcast yet, just because he's going to have to follow me. And, you know, what has he done that I haven't? Well, no, no, I, I was saying he's, already, he's already been on. That's what I was saying. Oh, really? I miss. Oh, no, <gasps> I knew that. I knew that. I knew that. Um, so, okay. So We're kind of a big deal in that. I mean, from this podcast, somebody's going to cut out that clip and blast me on Twitter and say, Max thinks he's better than Jim Harrison. I'm not. <laughs> I'm definitely not. So. Wow. I mean, you seem to be getting into venomous in a way. I mean, is that, is that a legitimate um, as far as like, fuck? What do I want to say? Is that a legitimate interest of yours or is that part of your job or is it both? Yeah, I mean, it's just well, like in an interesting way, like I, I've kept a lot of Venomous off my YouTube because care isn't as sorted out as it w- is with ball pythons. Ba- ball pythons, they're like humidity, 60%, hot spot, 88, cool spot, 78, you know, do this, do that. With Venomous, like, especially speckled rattlesnakes you take you know there's a there's a area of rattlesnake who eats exclusively gambles quail and gambles quail are usda protected and basically the snake goes out from under a rock where it dens up and then it goes 20 feet to under a creosote bush and it eats eats these birds and that's what it does its entire life so having a snake like that in captivity you can see them, like, they won't look twice at a rat, a mouse, an African softer, but they'll pursue a gerbil or a hamster. So it's like, but it's a snake-by-snake snake basis. Some don't look twice at gerbils or hamsters, and, you know, some will take, you know, like, I have one that takes frozen thawed mice. And it's it's such a variable basis to go off of, and, you know, some only take lizards. So it's like, like, those aren't as figured out yet. And I, I love the fact that there's so much unexplored there and there's so much to learn. Um, you know, ball pythons, there's a lot that you can do genetically, a lot of your own personal projects. So ball pythons for me, and you know, the, like the morphs side of things is more of an art project for me. Like, like right now I have a GHI pastel head albino and, and it's a male. And then I have an albino pinstripe, which is also a male. And then I have a hat albino female. And rather than trying to get more albinos out of the clutch and breed for the dollar, I wanted the GHI pastel albino. So, I, you know, I might not get it. I'll probably not get it. But 
I'm breeding for certain things for myself. And it's an art project, you know, to where I can complete collections I like and things I enjoy. And then um, everything else is just kind of, you know, works better in other people's projects. And that's why, you know, I, I, it goes to them. And as far as, you know, as far as venomous stuff, especially native stuff, that you learn about habitat, weather patterns, you know, you research them, you know, you, like in the case of the white, the white speckled rattlesnake I found, hiked 18 hours over three days to find the first one. And, you know, you like, you learn, should you check confluences? Should you check higher up on the mountain? You know, should you check the fingers that kind of go up the mountain? And like, there's a huge learning curve and a lot that's unexplored. And again, long explanation for kind of a short answer, but it's, um, there, there's a lot, you know, to learn there. And I feel like I learn more with venomous stuff as, as of this point anyway. Yeah. And I think it's interesting. The fact that, I mean, it seems like you have a connection with where they come from more so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause it's like, you obviously go out and find these animals in the wild and love finding, you know, rattlesnakes in the wild and stuff like that. So, I mean, is there anything that you take back from those experiences and kind of try to bring them into captivity? I am extremely blessed with the fact. Um, so, uh, sorry. Uh, I'm extremely blessed with the fact that I have somebody who's been, you know, doing, uh, doing it for 16, 17 years. Um, who has showed me the ropes, showed me everything, showed me some of his favorite herping spots, you know, um, and like, because I, I don't share it, you know, like uh, I'm, I'm too scared of just pillagers coming through. Um, but he, like, he showed me, you know, like he taught me tons of what, most of what I know. And uh, as far as venomous snakes goes, and I, so I've learned the ropes, you know, through him and I've had that benefit of, uh, um, you know, like lo looking back, you know, that there's been a huge learning curve for me, you know, I'm going to spots that took five years to find, you know, in cer with certain species. Um, and, you know, just to jump in the community and have that kind of, um, I, I hate to use this term, but clout, you know, kind of, you know, I don't have the reputation because I think that takes time, but to have like, hey, you know, like, he's learned so much because of this. So now he, you know, he, he knows his shit. Like I've been extremely blessed by that. And so, you know, I'll, I'll never act like I've always been a know it all because I'm still learning and, you know, um, so. Yeah. Is it that, I mean, first of all, how did you first meet him and how'd you guys get connected? So I, um, I was doing my YouTube channel. Um, it started out on my iPhone. Um, I was recording little videos and I was really, you know, like really warmly welcomed by a lot of the people, you know, I, I used to have truly blessed barbershop who would cut my hair once a month just for putting them in a couple videos. Um, dubiaroaches.com sponsored me for a bit. Um, and it like just those people who took a chance on a small creator, you know, like, like not everyone gets that. And, um, and don't get me wrong, I'm still a small creator, but it's, uh, but I had nothing. And so I originally just wanted to go film his venomous facility and learn a bit. And he said, well, why don't we go out herping together? And then he was like, Hey, I need a tiny guy who's less fat than I am to crawl under houses. And <laughs> you um, fit the, fit the bill. Right. Which it, it's so funny because like on a lot of my rattlesnake videos, like people go, how can you fit under there with balls the side of size of watermelons? You know? Like all, all the comments to talk about how big they are, and I'm like, okay, thanks. Um, proof, but, proof, proof, proof. Whip <laughs> up. Hold on, let me grab my hook. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, it, it's like that. Uh, so we ended up talking in person the first time outside of a bar. Like, um, there was kind of a concert going on, and. I was downtown. I was just walking around and I, he said, Hey, and you know, he had been drinking a little bit and he was like, you need to come herping with me. And like, I was like, I'm going to take you up on it. I was like, you know, I'm definitely going to do this. And so, uh, we went out, uh, found the prettiest Masasagua I've ever seen, um, on that trip because depending on your locale, as far as, uh, 
uh, I call them mama sausages, um, uh, rattlesnakes, then I, you can get real ugly, blotchy brown ones, or you can get some very gray, black and white ones that are pretty pristine. So, I mean, you know, right from the get-go, I mean, it, it just, it, it's kind of weird, like so many pieces just fell into place. And, you know, it's kind of like Steve Jobs said, you know, you can never connect the dots looking backwards or looking forwards. You know, you can only look to see how you've gotten to where you are, but looking forward, you can't do that. So you have to have some form of faith. And he goes, whether you're Buddhist, Christian, you know, it's like you just got to have faith that, you know, those dots will connect. And so I try. Yeah, isn't that, isn't that weird? Like you, I don't know what makes a person create a YouTube channel, and I don't know what it takes for that person to keep on doing it consistently. But like we all have a level of like, this is going to work out and we're going to keep on doing it, even if it doesn't make any sense. Exactly. So, I mean, I, I've had, I've had YouTubers try and sit there and say that um, I only do everything to copy them. And I'm like, you know, I, my first, my first exposure to YouTube was uh, through one of my best friends named Mitchell. And we used to watch um, uh, Mitchell Davis. Uh, if, like if anybody ever watched him live, lava, live way back when, you know, Shane Dawson, when he still had this swoosh cut, and <laughs> I was like, vlogging is really cool. Um, we did a couple blogs together. I never, I didn't really get into it then just because I was more into orchestra and school. And, you know, I was a homeless 16 year old, but you know, in college, you know, I, I got, you know, back into reptiles, you know, they've always been a part of my life, uh, you know, since I was a kid, uh, we even had the snake from the movie Anaconda and, you know, one of the real snakes, its name was Hollywood. And that was when about when I was about three years old. So, I mean, they've always been a part of my life, but getting back into reptiles. And then um, I, I, before I did Max's Morph, um, I helped Aaliyah start up Catalia's Critters. And then we like that ended up, you know, we, we just kind of agreed that uh, we work better independently from each other. So, uh so I, I started up Maxim Morphs, focused more on the snakes than geckos. I, I've done a little bit of gecko stuff, but I mainly focus on uh, snakes. And uh, and so and then as far as the YouTube channel, I just there was a couple people around me vlogging, and you know I started looking into it. I really started watching Dave Kaufman early on, um, from the like from the first moment I saw he was up for. Uh, uh, the reptile report, the video show of the year. Mm -hmm. I, I I went through and you know because Aaliyah was up for it and I watched everyone else's and um and I was like hey like that's how I discovered his channel. I was like this guy's cool. And then when I found like I, I met him here in Texas finally I saw him up at Tinley and um so I mean like Dave Kaufman was you know definitely an influence. Um but yeah so I mean. I saw how everyone else was like making videos. Um, he's not the one who say who says I copy him, but uh, but I like I I like I started creating these videos, and I was like, you know, that's why I ended up calling it Max's View. I for for a second it was called Maximus Snacksimus, actually. Wow, <laughs> that's yeah, I throw it way back. But then I was like, okay, look, this this isn't like. With my ch my channel, it's not exactly my stories that I'm always telling. You know, it could be my animals, or it could be this vendor, or it could be, you know, like this process. You know, sometimes it's even my own story, but it's like it's just my view of things. And you know, <whistles> drop it, good boy. Um, and that was my dog. He's a dog. Oh my god! Oh, so, um. But yeah, oh, so cute. But I, I think that that's an interesting point as far as the fact that I mean, every everyone as far as YouTube, you start you start copying people. I mean, like that's how you start off until you find your own voice. I mean, to a certain degree, you have to be influenced by people, and you need to have you know that style at first but then you kind of move on from there i don't know if you experience right and you thing. create your own niche you know and i mean it's it's like like everyone 
like everyone and their dog did a video room tour. I, even I did that. And then everyone did a feeding all my pets. And yeah, I, yeah. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to do feeding all my pets um, just because, you know, most of my pets are snakes. And so it's like, it kind of gets redundant um, after so many animals. I'm, I won't talk about the one I'm going to do um, <laughs> in relation to that, just because I want to have it first and then people can copy me. Um, but it's, it, it's an offshoot of that. But it's, um, yeah, th- like there's, like there's so many avenues you can take, but yeah, like people definitely influence people. And, but as far as I really hate calling us like calling myself a pet tuber, even I'm not. And the reason of that is just because that community, you know, like if you've seen a lot of the drama, it's, it, it can be really toxic. So yeah, I make animal based. They're also not males like us. Let's be honest. Most of them are not yeah. males. <laughs> so I mean, I, and I'm not saying that you and I are hot shit. Um, I, you know, I think you're hot shit. You're you're cool, but it's you know, it's like there's so much backstabbing and drama in that kind of like small knit community with each other, and it's so stupid. At the end of the day, rising waters raise all ships. You know, we should encourage each other. You know, like I'm not gonna sit, you know, turn around and be like I don't even know why Joe does his podcast. This this this, you know, or like you know. You know, I got a DSLR and then, you know, Aaliyah got a DSLR after. It's like, so what? Fantastic. You know, that means each person gets their own vehicle. Like, like I walked around, I was doing, I'm working on a Vice promo for Sean uh, for the Herp shows. And I was walking around and I had my gimbal and it stabilizes footage. It makes it look smoother. It takes away that handheld look. Danny Mendes saw it, and Zodic saw it, Aaliyah saw it, Zoe saw it. Um, I mean, it's not a small thing that I'm carrying around. And I would love for them to, you know, go out and get one. You know, like, like it's not like I'm going to be like, well, I had it first, you know. And guess what? Filmmakers have been using gimbals for years for now. And before that, they were so even studying the you, know. Community, you know, and like a yeah. ton of vloggers don't do that. You know, like Peter McKinnon, I love Peter McKinnon. And it's if he turns around and goes, you know, watches all the time. Him and Casey. What's up, guys? You know, it's like, like it's so, and you know, like I mean that that's just kind of a toxic attitude, you know. Like, I I think if your niche, you know, it boils down to if your niche is what that person's looking for, they'll keep watching you because the numbers say that people will boil down and end up watching a couple YouTubers that are their favorite. They'll watch some of the other videos. But in the end, it's story over quality. And so, and like, that's why that's something I preach as far as, you know, doing my production stuff is it's always story over quality. And I can tell that story with quality, but, um, but that's off on a tangent. But like, it's that kind of toxic, you know, he said, she said kind of talk. It's, it got so old so quickly. And I mean, that's why like, like the rock star attitude kills things for me you know like kills people for me so like even like no matter where anyone stands on brian barcheck if you walk up to him at a show he will talk to you and you know i like i was impressed by that aspect of him you know i'm not gonna talk like i I don't express my view on barcheck one way or the other um again i'm a moderate um and I just, I don't feel like that debate. I feel like that is beating a dead horse and I'm vegan. So, uh, <laughs> but it's like, you know, like you find out real quick why somebody does something, you know, if they do it for the passion, then they'll stick to it. And that, that going off of what you said, I think if somebody loves what they do, they'll stick to it no matter what. The money comes second, you know, like the time and the hours and stuff that you put into it, you know, that I put into it, nobody sees that. And or or few people see and you know few people understand it and those who love what they do they'll stick to it and you know like I that's why I have a fucking policy you know if they want to just sit there run their mouth you know gossip different things like that I spend no time on it so um, yeah I think I think it's weird probably for us because we don't even. I feel like we're friends with you, we're friends with Aaliyah, but we're also like not in the YouTube community, I feel. 
Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's intentional, or unintentional. I don't care, but it's like we we haven't played that game from the beginning, so it's like oh, exactly. it's just uh, we're just hanging out, basically. Right. And, and I and I hope I didn't phrase it in a way to make it sound like sound like I have animosity towards Aaliyah. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. We, like we just, I mean, we dated, we had a business together for a while, and we just we don't now. So I mean, uh, uh. Like, she was just somebody who, you know, like, was around in the beginning of my channel. You know, I was a little bit of an influence. So, like, I like I always wish her well. And, you know, like, but the minute, you know, even if it was Aaliyah, like, if, if she started to backstab talking, you know, like, just the kind of attitude that you see and she's been a victim of, um, like, if I saw that, it's, I don't acknowledge yeah. it. I don't. You know, I'm not going to clash with her publicly. You know, the WWE says controversy creates cash, but I'm not going to, you know, I'm trying to think of somebody. I, I, I like making Bob Clark jokes because, you know, don't have mites on your table. Um, that's quality of the animal. That's not the person. I don't know the guy. I don't care. But, well, I, I do care as far as the animals are concerned. But as far as his name goes, you know, that's... Um, but, I think that's weird, especially when you're when because I don't like to talk shit about anyone, but if <laughs> there, like, but but mm -hmm. if there's a convicted dog fighter that we're, we're is, not, please don't get into at this the again. Same, please don't get into at this the, again. Stop, stop. It's at the same reptile show as you. Then yeah, I think you have every right to shout them out. Oh, and, was he there? Was he there? I'll talk yeah. to him. That's yeah. Not, so that's... it's like yeah, I understand. Like yeah, we're all civil, we're all cool, but Sweetwater Rattlesnake Roundup, people like that, you know, there's things that we have to stand for. If you want to debate else, you're the standing for nothing at this Right. If yeah. you want to debate the topic, I'm there all the time. But if you're yeah. a, a shit stir, then like like people find those kind of people out all the time, you know. Like if I if I say anything negative, it's gonna have merit and it's gonna be on topic. It's not gonna be on the person. You know, um, unless it's like person. act or is excellence is not person. Act. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like if somebody's consistently doing bad things, then, then I'll say, hey, this person's consistently doing bad things. And I'm not I'm not going to sit there and pretend that I've been perfect. You know, I've had screw ups. I've um, uh, I can only go into so much on this topic, but uh, I've had a bank hiccup. Uh, where I de where I deposited into an account and then it didn't show up and um, in their account and I ended up having to pay out of pocket um, to like pay this person back and like and it was uh, it was a headache and a half and like it made my name look bad and so it, like it's like you know but and then there's and my mistake there was lack of transparency. I didn't talk to this person so much and um, like about what was going on. I was just trying to keep it, you know, um, keep it under wraps. And, you know, so, yeah, I've screwed up. Um, that has nothing to do with this FBI case, that, by the way. Um, I, so, I mean, it's, it's just like you have your hiccups and you have things that go on like so every so often. And, you know, you just kind of like – I. Everything I do, I try and do the best I can. And, you know, I would say my biggest weakness is definitely time. Um, mm -hmm. Time, you know, well spent, you know, like time put. And it gets really disheartening when you put so much time into something and they'll just kind of watch it fall. So, and, you know, that that's happened. Or it, it sucks even worse, you know, and I'm sure, like, you, I know you've definitely had this happen where, you're sitting on something and you're like, I know this is going to be so great. I just need the time for it to pan out. And you're so impatient. And you're like, damn, I'm one of those young, probably liberal millennials who just wants everything right now. And you're like, yeah, I kind of do. But that's, you know, it's not like I'm going to not work for it. I'm just like, I just want to eat sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> let's pay rent this month. Uh, I'm not asking for too much here. <laughs> I think my parents in 76 got a mortgage when they were like fucking 12. So uh, yeah. what's going I, on here? Joe, I don't know how, like what words you said to get me so fired up and like passionate about this. Like, I don't like fake people. And please don't, know, please don't, please don't, please don't. You're going to get, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to light a fire. So no, it's like, it's huge for me for somebody to be authentic. 
you know, that is the biggest thing for me. And, um, I mean, a lot of people who have quarrels with me or have had them don't talk to me in person. You know, they're fake to my face or they just don't talk at all. And, I mean, and, I, like, if you're doing what you're doing and you stand for something you believe in, yeah, you're going to have people who don't like you. But, um, but it's, you know, like – situations like I think typically when somebody approaches me about a situation, I can get a result and I'll be the first to admit when I screw up. Yeah, I agree. I try to be as objective as possible and give people the benefit of the doubt unless they fight dogs. Right. <laughs> no, you do that. Fuck you. But I'm proud of you for how calmly you said that statement. Well, no, no, it's true. I mean, everyone else can do a few bad things, but then again, that's a repeat offender. That's also something different. Um, so someone who does something once makes Hold a on. mistake, learns from it, that's understandable. So, um, you know. I mean, and like here's the funny thing. I'm a Christian. I believe in forgiveness. And and people are like, Man, Max, you're a Christian, you have a mouth on you. Well, yeah. I I mean, I, I believe I believe the message behind someone's words is better than like the actual words themselves. So I can be joking around with my friends and be like, ah, you fucking suck and be nicer than some old Christian woman who goes up and says, bless your heart. You know? So I, I think it's definitely the heart behind the words that matters a little bit more, but yeah, I believe in forgiveness, but it's like, I believe in accountability. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. And that's something that I believe in the long run will benefit us as a community, keeping ourselves accountable. So other people won't do it for us. Right. Like, it, like if, if somebody who's a friend of mine, you know, like, uh, comes up and Max, I need you to straighten your shit up. My girlfriend does it all the time. Um, <laughs> you know, it's not that she doesn't like me. It, you know, it, it's that, you know, they want what's best for you. And again, like the heart behind the message, if somebody is self-serving when they tell you something like that, um, which I mean, people will see eventually see right through it. Um, but if somebody's authentic, then, you know, they're, so again, I, I say this, but I'm like, if anybody goes through any sort of my personal life, they're going to know I'm not perfect, <laughs> but, mm -hmm. but I do my best, you know. But, okay. but we we got you here with over like, time. Yeah, on short notice, and we've kept you way over time. Oh, I didn't even notice. <laughs> yeah. well, that's good. So, where can people she's like, get? She's like Joe. I'm hungry. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much how this. So we ate before, but time. I do also. We have ice cream cake in the freezer, and I'm thinking about it. So. Ah, <laughs> uh, nice. Well, oh, I nice to you. Um, like you're a, awesome to talk to. Um, I love doing these live streams and I love rambling. Yeah. And I making, appreciate you being here. Making being, good jokes. And it's, it's easy when you have someone that, you know, in person to talk to in these, like sometimes podcasts can be a little bit formal and you can be a little bit nervous off the bat, but having someone who you talk to about times is super easy. And, uh, once again, I appreciate you coming on. And I implore everyone to check you out. So, where um, where's the best place for them? Sorry, I that's what you I was gonna say. Where's the best yeah. place for people to reach out to you? Um, I would say you can reach me. Um, I have Max's view on uh, YouTube, or I have Max's morphs on Facebook. Um, uh, I also have MaxProductions.net. If you go there, you can find all my contact information. Um, and then, I mean, reach out to me anyway. Uh, I am always happy to talk. So uh, if if it takes me a minute to get back to you, then uh, just know when I do get back to you, then I will be there to engage and talk. And, um, but yeah. For sure. And for us, PortsaPythons.com, PortsaPythons on Instagram, Facebook, everywhere else. Podcast from the ground up. You're listening to it. If you are on download, then you can check out the video version, the strives that streams live on YouTube, typically on Mondays or Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Or if it's like today, it is uh, on Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Go. So that makes sense, right? You guys can figure it out. Yes. Maybe not. Sorry about that. But And it's also available for download. Yes. T-shirts available. Snakes available. Patreon available. Patreon available. <laughs> um, also, if you're in the Philly area, we will be at Hamburg on Saturday. Not bending. Just hanging out, 
Um, most likely he will be walking around and I will be in a chair at Matt Minotola's table. And if anybody so. sees him there with a the gimbal, just know it's because of me. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I know yeah. you trademarked the, uh, the gimbal. I don't right think now. you're. He, unfortunately, I don't think he's trying to film Hamburg. I don't know. Yeah, I don't want to show the world. We don't want to show the world Hamburg. It's it's not something we really want to show off. It's in the same venue as a Sweetwater round, Roundup. I think <laughs> pretty it's much the same exact venue oh. type of thing. Yeah, that's rough. <laughs> it's so it's so similar. It's kind of sad. Yeah, Ryan Sullivan earlier was like, "I need to come in Hamburg." I was like, "No, eh, you'll probably get a bunch of sales, but you may, but you may come back home with stuff too." And just no, right? Yeah, my snake died in a week because its temperature was 112. It's your fucking fault. I exactly. put it on my dashboard going home. I don't know why it's spinning in circles. <laughs> We're in Pennsylvania, though. They don't have this other. Yeah, some of them. I mean, you can get country. No, there's, get there, weird it's, it's weird. It's not what you're doing, but it's something. <laughs> it's um, but the press will rise again. <laughs> yes, yeah, a great outro. But <laughs> if you want to see Sandberg, we'll be there. Um, other than that, thank you, Max, again for coming on, and especially in such short notice. Um, and next time, we're gonna get your girlfriend on. Yes, for sure. Uh, we'll have her sit down. We'll, she'll put on some Jeffree Star while um, we're hanging out. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Bye, guys. Thanks Bye. for Thank watching. Thank you guys for listening. Thanks, Max, for being here later. Max.